would be like, oh, like th this is dropping. <laughs> and then they'd be like, oh, it's just a, a show on YouTube. So anyway, we are live. Thanks for waiting, everyone. Uh, let me, there I am, and there the crew is. So as I was telling these guys, I, I'm putting my two year, my two and six year old to bed right now. So I'm just gonna, uh, sorry, I'm getting yelled at by my wife for being super loud, <laughs> even though I'm in the basement. But anyway, I'm gonna let you guys take it over and uh, I'll be back in a little bit. Handle your business first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so we were, just, we were just laughing about, um, I said, Peter said, hey, can you guys come on tonight? And uh, I said, yeah, can you can you make a little graphic? And um, so his, his graphic basically said lemon coffee dropping tonight. And um, we both got DMs about uh, from people asking about seeds and stuff. It's, it's not a seed drop. I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint y'all. Actually, I'm getting my first uh, pretty uh, USA seed drop here with the seeds here now real soon. And with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got. I think I got a little bit of something special coming my way, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. So this yeah. is your, your first time you're going to be dropping with um, with Seeds Here Now? Yeah, James is such a cool guy. And uh, when I met the, the family there, the community, it just uh, – I just loved him, man. It's just uh, – they made me feel uh, like, a, like a family member, you know? It's just a uh, really cool atmosphere there. I like I like them. Yeah, yeah. James James handles his business well, I think. You know, he's been doing it for a long time. Yeah. And, um, he you knows know. the shit too. He knows he knows the strains. Boy, he knows he educates me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He doesn't he doesn't just let anybody on there. If if uh if you see a breeder on that site um or, or from that bank, you know, you can you can bet your bottom dollar that they've uh they've done their homework and um they're not just copying people's work and um you know doing any kind of um, you know, short-sighted breeding, um, which really is, is kind of a good intro. Um, folks, if you don't know, this is, this is Lemon Hoko, uh, Pacific Northwest legend, um, uh, green bean seeds, Lemon Hoko genetics. And, uh, he was my mentor. He got me into breeding and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be breeding. I wouldn't be doing what I am today if this guy didn't, didn't really put me onto it. And, uh, how that happened was we we met up on a on a forum in the medical days called uh, Northwest Green Thumb, and uh, Northwest Green Thumb was a really cool local thing up here in the Seattle area in Washington State, and it was really focused um, around patients and you know the growers you know mostly, and so through that through that forum we linked. And, um, you know, he was doing stuff back then. This was, how, how long ago was that, Mel? Ten years? It, well, no, I started uh, making seeds about 2004, 2005. But, hey, uh, Kaya, the way I, I remembered us meeting, <laughs> it was a little bit different than what you just said there. Um, the first time I ever saw you was at a cup. I usually won. I, I usually won. Right. Right, right. I always won these local cups, and all of a sudden, you got this young kid walking up there taking my first place trophy. My first place trophy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that, man. I had to meet you. I had to talk to you, and uh, it was epic that night. We, we sat around for I don't know six, eight hours, and it seemed like only a half an hour went by. We were just uh, shooting the shit and catching up and learning about each other, man. It, it, you know, if anything, I want to say uh, something about you. You know. Um, I've known a lot of breeders, a lot of growers in, in my time. And I got to say that you're one, you're somebody I have a lot of respect for. And I admire you. And it's not just because of uh, what you have done in, in breeding and so forth. But when you when we were moving ahead with the medical community, and what impressed me the most was the day that you stood in front of uh, the senators in Olympia. And you were on the news and you were talking to thousands of people and with your passion and your message it was it was part of what made the medical movement move forward and you were a big part of it and i'm blessed to uh have known you at that time I'm blessed to know you now <laughs> it's just uh you're, you're you're like my little brother from another mother man you know <laughs> thanks for thanks for taking me under your wing and and uh and showing me this this uh, cannabis breeding stuff and helping me helping me do that. And I do remember the cup that was the the first uh, Tacoma hemp cup. 
and uh, they had the, I think we had the thing down at that, uh, it was one of the first brick and mortar um, deals. That was like 2010. I want to say it was 2010. Do you remember what, what strain you, you went, you went with? <clears throat> yeah, that was chem four. Yeah. That was yep. chem four. You beat my chem double D out that, that year, man. I was like, oh yeah, I was going to win with that double D. I never entered her yet. And it's like, man, you just like pull the rug out from under my feet. I mean, <laughs> that was like, what the fuck? You know, when I saw you, it was like, who is that cocky dude? Because you had that baseball cap on with the flat, you know, bill. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it was good times. You know, um, I, I was hoping that we could someday get together with uh, online and talk to Exotic, Mike, and uh, Fab Man, the original Northwest 47 crew. That would be so fucking cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, I bet Mike will be down. Um, we might have a hard time getting a hold of Fab Man, but uh, I'm I'm definitely down to try it. Yeah, that that would be awesome just to just to catch up a little bit. And uh, well, uh, if, if you guys if you guys have hit up or, or following um, on Instagram, we've been doing some seed drops, and and I've been directing folks to um, an email, and that email is um, the nw47 um, at gmail.com. and the at the nw47 the northwest 47 that's the 47th parallel that's kind of where we're at up here and um back in the medical days exotic mike uh lemon hoko myself and uh another old time feller um from up north in bellingham would would have meetings regularly you know i mean you know once every couple of months or once a month if we could make it um and we would just talk breeding, talk about what, what the different guys were working with and um, what we thought was going to be good and, you know, sharing smoke. And um, that was really kind of a fun thing. And then, and then we thought, well, Hey, you know, uh, we can, we can make a, make a little club out of this and, and maybe, um, you know, get a booth at, at hemp fest or something. And nobody was really doing that at the time. Um, so that was really, a, um, again, a, a blessing to be, you know, rubbing elbows with, with, you know, exotic Mike and, um, you know, these old timers and even you know, some of the young guys, guys like Thunder Fudge, you got Thunder Fudge, you got Doc D that was what, you know, that showed up. Uh, God, let's see who else, uh, 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 Cuban, Cuban grower. Come on, yeah. man. We can't forget yeah. about, you know, that, that dude. Do you remember uh, how we used to get set for the cups? We used to all get together and say, well, uh, what's your entry like? We'd all smoke it and say, "No, I think we got a better one." <laughs> well, that that first cup with uh, with Cuban, you you called me up and you said, "Hey, I, there's this this kid from the the thumb, and um, he's he's got some crazy good hash, and he's thinking about entering it. What what do you think?" And uh, I want to send him over to you, you know, and 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 you linked this up, and um, you know, man, he went on a tear. Just an absolute terror on the cups. Um, he wasn't sharing them with nobody. <laughs> him and Exotic Mike just crushed it, cleaned him up for a while. So that was um, that was really cool. That was really you know, cool. after the Seattle Cup. He he came up to me. He goes, Lem, look. He, he shows me his medal. He, you know, it was a third place medal. He goes, look, I, I want I want a cup. And I said, yeah, but you know what? You're not a champion until you win three in a row. And you know what? I didn't talk to him for over ten years. And when I did talk to him again, he came onto my Discord. He goes, Lem. The first thing he told me was, Lem. He goes, remember he said I wasn't a champion until I won three in a row? He goes, I won 27 in a row, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was really amazing, amazing to watch, you know. Absolutely amazing the way that they just could not be beat for nothing, um, you know, and, and well-deserved, you know, well-deserved. Vibe, the vibe was right. The, the pot was right. The weed was right. It was uh, good timing. Everybody was, uh, you know, clicking. Everything was going good. <clears throat> really good times back then, huh? Yeah, yeah, the Cuban tech. <laughs> Have you talked to him lately? Um, you know what? It's been a while. Um, maybe maybe six months, maybe even, maybe even a year. You know, this COVID thing. Whew. The year went by fast. I got I got lost out in Hawaii for a while. So, um, but yeah, last time I talked to him, he was doing good. Um, we actually, I was doing some work for an outfit up here, and we we bought a bunch of um, beds from him um, to use in our facility. And uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Kai, let me let me uh, ask you a few questions about that new stream that you got. You if you if you don't mind, I was uh, really interested. It was uh, the black coffee. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Tell me about it. So. Um, it, it's not, it's not my strain. Um, the green source gardens and green source gardens, they're, they're down in Oregon. And, um, I, I actually ran into them, met them for the first time at the living soil symposium. And I think the next year they might've won the Emerald cup 
uh, regenerative farming award, uh, just an incredible, um, incredible garden up there in Oregon doing regenerative farming and Hugo cultures. And, um, and so I, I had gifted them some coffee F3 back at that living soil symposium. And, you know, I always encourage people to, you know, work, work with the stuff and, and, you know, further it if you want to. And, um, he ended up popping the seeds and, and really found something that he liked in there and did some open pollinations and started selecting and working the line. And, um, he, you know, he bred a couple more F gens and, um, and this is one of the outcrosses from those F gens, um, the black coffee. I think I got a pack here. Let me grab it. Boom right there. Um, so the black dog, the black dog in here, this is, that's from, um, bio vortex. I don't know if y'all know who bio vortex is. Um, bio vortex guy. I actually have one of his books around here somewhere. Really incredible comic book, um, style book that, uh, talks all about, um, you know, soil science and, and doing things in a real natural manner. And so, Bio Vortex guy um, had been breeding with this uh, black dog Kush, and he's worked it all kinds of different ways. And um, and Green Source Garden guys took that black dog Kush. They had a keeper from some seeds that they um, had selected. They do literally everything that they do is from seed. Everything they do is full season, um, outdoor. Not what we call natural cycle. You know, right in the in the natural um, earth there. So. They they bred and and they do like some selections on the hill and then they do some breeding. Do you and know so, the genetics of the black dog? You know what I'm I'm not one hundred percent sure, um, but I'm I'm sure it would be easy to access. Um, somebody's got somebody wants to Google it real quick, um, and then they they hit that. So it was a that that's the F four on that that black dog, and then um, they hit it with the coffee F five. And um, the pictures of it are just amazing. And um, I've got to sample some of the flowers myself. Um, and it's it's absolutely amazing herbs. Super hey, strong. With, with your coffee, when, when you cubed it, uh, are you planning on doing any further work with it? Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're, I want to, you know, as long as it keeps doing good stuff for me, I'm going to keep working it, you know. Are you and gonna found a right? lot of uniformity. Um, at, at, at the cube stage, you know? And so ultimately, you know, while I was working it on, on, on that sense was, you know, I wanted to be able to, to have a male that really produced <clears throat> and, and was kind of mimicking what the female was doing. So, you know, by having a male that's composed mostly of that mother's genetics, by BXing, 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 um, you're increasing that, that potentiality. So that's, that's kind of where I was going with it. You know, now I'd like to just do the outcrosses and see, see what happens. You know, um, my best guesses are, are still just guesses. So until I can actually put that that mail onto some stuff and, and a lot of different stuff and and see how it works with different genetics, I'm not I'm not going to know kind of what what to do with it. But um, at that point, you know, that's this is kind of the the hope and the direction that we're going in. Um, but but as always, you know, I'm I'm doing other stuff too. Uh, you know, that hammer hammer stuff that we've been running is just it's such an incredible plant, and it's just perform outperforming really everything we have on the farm right now um, when you say outperforming what and what and what standards are you looking for in performance uh, it, a, it checks all boxes so i can wash it i can make flour with it it's it's got the right um uh, flower cycle time so it's like about you know eight nine weeks it's a little faster in the greenhouse um, but it's just nothing can touch it. it. It never has any kind of issues and it's always overperforming everything else in the garden. And um, it, it really returns on the hash. So that's kind of, that's one of been one of our favorites besides the strawberry. So um, on the hammer yes. side, we are breeding out um, an F gen and we're going to actually going to be releasing a new line pretty soon with, with the hammer hammer male um, against, you know, it's a small group of plants. Um, but we're we're really happy and kind of hot on the hammer hammer. You know, I, I gotta follow, I gotta follow where my nose goes. You know, and if I if I'm running a bunch of stuff out there, and and this stuff is the best, then that's that's where I'm gonna go. And and um, yeah, the hammer hammer has been really running the farm. Well, see, you know, this is where I think uh, somebody like you is blessed because you're you're kind of you have a touch of the old school where we did smoke our weed and determine we how good it was by our nose and 
and our smoke, right? I mean, we, we didn't really care what it looked like at the time. If it got you stoned, it tastes decent, then it was good weed. But then you also are really involved with some of the newer strains. So you got the best of both worlds. And I'm not as involved with the newer strains as you, uh, Kaya. I don't, I don't even know what Runtz is, to be honest. And, and I don't have nothing against any of the newer strains. I think it's a blessing <laughs> to see uh, uh, cannabis progress the way it is. You know, I still, I think there's, there's room for uh, everything. Um, as long as it's progressing forward and not going back backwards. Um, yeah, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't bring in a lot of clones now. Um, I gave up on that, but you know, I get to see, I get to see some of the other stuff, and you know, I'll, most of the time, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because it has this crazy cool name, and and for me, you know, like good cannabis, there's there's a there's something to the name, you know what I mean? It, like it's if you if you call it something, it's gotta it's gotta it's got to have a connection to that name. And, and a lot of times uh, you, know, you get excited to smoke a banana or something and it's, it's, it's nothing like banana or anything like it. So um, I don't know, but <clears throat> on that note, you know, I, I think staying in your own lane and having your own stuff that you're working with and, and pulling in cool stuff that you think is fun, you know, that's, that's good. But, you know, run, run the stuff before you start breeding to it, you know, get to know it. And um, I think you're going to get better results. Hey Kai, are you uh, are you are you ever planning on going to do fems? A lot of people are, are going and dropping fem seeds now. Are you ever planning on do, getting that in that uh, arena? <clears throat> you know, we, we actually are. I, I I've actually had a couple couple people out there send me their different um, fem solutions to play with, and just because there's been such a demand for it, and you know my my understanding of of how fem seeds can be bred, but also how nature might create that kind of opened me up to it a little bit because I was really opposed to it for a while. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're working with that. I'm also working with the Mandalorian, uh, Mandalorian Genetics. And he's, uh, I gave him some of our coffee stock and he's going to be doing some stuff with um, auto flowering coffee and we'll be feminizing coffee. So, um, you know, especially for like the European guys, they all want, they all want feminized stuff. No, no, when we're talking fems, you're not a newbie at this. You've done fems before. <laughs> I know you have because we we. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I I play with it, but I it's not something that I was I was putting out. You know. Um, yeah. It was just but something. It was, it was, it was, it was good it, testing. You know? I mean, you tested in your lab, and I tested fems in my lab, so we got to see a, a part, you know, from different worlds and stuff. And but our conclusions came to about the same at that time, and I think the only reason that we kind of steered away from fems is because of the the lines that we were working. They, they weren't as work you know for feminization as they are now some of the lines that are work being worked now they're they're a lot more you know selected for those traits uh it's more st stability back 10 years ago there was you know you were lucky if you even found a stable strain 12 years ago yeah i i, I think there's something to that i mean some of the stuff that we were working on here we've banned out so many generations and um and tighten things down and you know like with the cubed i'm seeing I'm seeing really good uniformity, you know, in the females. So to me, that's, that's kind of, that, that lets you know you're on the right track, you know, it's, and that's how it should be. So, and once you get to that point, then you can maybe, you know, if you want to do some feminized seeds, I think maybe there's still going to be variation in it, just like anything, but um, I, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm less hesitant to, uh, to mess with it now. And, and, uh, you know, if that's what people want, then, you know, let's have at it. I, I know, I know I get, when I get people, new people that want to grow, I don't want to give them a clone anymore. Um, and, and I tell them, you know, it's easy enough to call out a male, but, you know, a lot of people are really intimidated by that. So um, I find it really easy to give them a feminized seeds. But on the other hand, you know, it, it doesn't always work out so well, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, speaking of males, you know, we always get hit with this question and I'm going to ask it to you again because your answer is, is great and it, it teaches people on how to select males and stuff. How do, how, what are your selection? What do you look for when you select a male? Okay. Um, well, I, I look for a lot of different things. Structure is very important, you know, um, because there's, there can be great variation, just like in, in female plants and male plants in the structure. Um, stem rub is something that's, that's always a really nice indicator. You know, if you're getting some, some cool smells off of it, that can't be a bad thing. Um, I also try to, you know, some people, when they're selecting their males, you know, so um, 
I, I like to put my seeds into a one gallon pot and then let them, um, let them get root bound. And then the males start to show themselves. So the first, generally the first males that show themselves, I try to call those. And then the really, really late males, um, they're not getting selected either. I kind of like somewhere in the middle, but also near the end, you know, um, I, I don't know that there's, you know, again, this is all just kind of intuitive stuff and, and things that I've kind of, I've played with things and I've had stuff not work out. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, I'm not, we were talking about this the other day, the difference between scientific breeding and, or, and the art of breeding or the science of breeding and the art of breeding, you know, and, um, you know, there's, there's some powerful tools in the science of breeding, right? You can test stuff early and, and get ratios and you can find sex and you can do all kinds of cool things. Um, and then, you know, you, you have the testing stuff at your at your fingertips. You can find out what the different cannabinoids are that are hidden in there, you know, that, that you wouldn't otherwise know without those scientific tools. But there's also the art of breeding. And and that's really where you're, you're following the farmer's intuition. But more than the farmer's intuition, you're following the farmer's tools of his senses. So the farmer's in there making observations on plant structure, what is desirable and what isn't. And they're also making judgments. You know, and and again, I think that's where people kind of get separated um, is we, we all might have the same colors or the same genetics to work with. But how we're making those selections is different and how we're making those selections is based off of our senses. You know, so how we look at the plant structure, um, how how we how we select for, you know, crystal content or terpenes. You know, some guys might say, oh, I like this terpene this way or that one. Or if you've got two of them and they have the same terpene, then then what are the little micro things that you're looking at? as far as bud structure goes, that might make you select one way or the other, um, you know, and, and are you going through and, and making sure that you're, you're keeping those plants until you smoke the herbs? Um, Cause I know a lot of people just select off of just looking at them. And some of these guys out here don't even smoke, which to me is, is really, um, it's strange, but I guess maybe if you had somebody there that you trusted, then, then that would be okay. Um, but really, you know, that's kind of the, the, the art of breeding. You know, and no matter Kai, how much- you, Kai, do, do you see that thing on the screen, the science of breeding versus art of breeding? There you go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. You know, and, and no matter how much science you have, you can't predict what it's going to throw. You know, you can have a good idea. You can have a good guess, an educated guess. Um, but until you actually cross those plants and, and run that progeny and look and see what it did and what you've got in there, that's how you know if you made good selections or not. And, and that's, to me, that's why like a testing stuff is important, but um, you know, the market, the market is dictating things and uh, people are just wanting to get their hands on stuff. It's very hot right now. Um, so we're probably going to put out some stuff that's untested. Um, you know, just as long as people know what it is and I, I think they'll be stoked to get their hands on it. Here's a, here's a general question and you'd be the per perfect person to explain it to, to some of the newer growers. Um, we mentioned F generations, filial generations. What does that terminology mean? What, why, why do breeders even, or what, it, why, why is it concerned to breeders? Well, and, and it's not so much even just, just the F gen part of it, but what you're doing at those different stages. So F gen is basically your, your breeding brothers and sisters down the line. So for, to, to create an F1, you're taking two unrelated and you breed them together. That's your first generation. It's filial generation one. And then if you took and popped a lot of those seeds um, and then bred brothers and sisters together, you'd be creating the next F gen, F2, F3, and so on and so forth. But at those different spots, you can also be doing either open pollinations where you're, you're basically using multiple females and multiple uh, males. And but what's the purpose? Of, what, what, why would you do that? That's going to open up the genetic pool. Okay, so that's going to give you a whole lot more, a lot more options and uh, visibility of what's inside those different plants. It's it's different recombina recombinations of genes. Okay, so you might want to open it up to see what's in there, what what you've got. Okay, and then from that point you could narrow it down and you say, oh, I really like this female or these three females and then narrow it down. And I really like the looks of these couple males over here and narrow it down. And then ultimately you'd wanna be, you know, breeding with one male so that you know exactly what's gonna go on in the next round. Um, and you might only even have one female or two, 
you know, I don't know. Um, but you know, as long as you're picking the best one, um, and then, and then you're breeding those together. And at some point, if you wanted to do a back cross, right, you might take one of those plants and then you're going to, first, you're going to have to outcross it. So you would cross it to an unrelated, um, cultivar and then you're going to bring it back to that original then you'd be selecting out boys in the filial generation essentially well it's, it'd be the the F, f1 generation and then you're bringing it back so then bx1 and then you'd select a male from that bx1 and breed it back to the mom again that's the back cross too and then you'd select a male again from that progeny and and keep bringing it back and as you're doing that you're basically stacking the genetics um towards the mom's uh, deck of cards so to speak now that's a great philosophy on how when you're developing or you're trying to stacking traits to, to develop a, an ideal uh, cultivar female. Would you do the same to make a male for breeding? You tell me, Mel. <laughs> I mean, it, it, just the way you explained it, why not do it for a male, right? Why not? <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, you're, you're stacking the, the, the genetics, which is gonna make your breeding more predictable. Which yeah, is, I, I mean, listen, it's it's it wouldn't be any different for boys or girls. The exactly. genetic the genetic coding works the same way, right? Exactly. So, um, but let's say if you wanted a chocolate uh, male for breeding, you could actually develop a chocolate male by doing this type of selection, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think you know. And I, I remember seeing, um, seeing a guy do a, a lot of males out in the field once, and doing big selections on males, but. I don't see a lot of folks doing that so much. Um, and again, um, you know, that, that might be where that science part comes in, where you've got these tools where you can start to analyze males without having to take them, you know, long cycle and, and do kind of things. You know, you can, you can even test maybe for terpenes in males. I, I don't know. This isn't something that I've played with. Um, but I would imagine that you could start doing that. And um, <laughs> And, and after you've gathered enough data, you would, you would have some really cool um, stuff to base your, your judgments on. We're kind of doing that by nature, by let's say the stem rub, we're linking those traits that we smell in the stem uh, yeah. uh, versus the, ter uh, the potency that we've experienced in the past, right? So we're, we're trying to link traits is what we're trying to do, trying to find something that we can link to a certain trait that is going to be um, a pretty consistent in the genetics. but. Um, if you could do it through uh, scientific research, microscopes and cutting into slicing into DNA and stuff like that, why not? But that's way over my head. That's the next generation, Kaya. That's for you and your kids. That's for your kids. Yeah, kids. probably my kids. I mean, you know, <laughs> and, and even having access to that, you, you pretty much have to be, you know, in one of these um, legalized markets yeah. to to have access to even some of the testing and stuff. It's just it's just the way that they're doing it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we'll get there at some point with our little farm out there. You know, right now we're just we're just making hash, but at some point we'll we'll turn our we'll turn our eye on on doing that kind of breeding stuff in there with the testing labs and all of that. You know, you, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think very many folks are doing that right now. How many breeders are? How many commercial farms are breeding in Washington right now? Do you know? I don't. I don't know many. Um, I know. I know Dutch Blooms is doing some work on his farm. Um, but aside from that, most of them are definitely not doing any kind of intentional breeding. Would um, you say that that would be a, a lucrative market, especially the way everybody's closed off and getting new genetics into the, the commercial field? No, no they, they're still able to bring genetics and stuff in. Um, you know, and they're buying, they're participating in the seed seed thing. You know what I mean? So they're they're bringing new stuff in and, and just not having to breed. You know, they just they're just. Um, oh, they're allowing that now. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think lots of people, you know what I mean? They've had their windows. They brought a lot of stuff yeah. in. So it, it's there. It's there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, after a few years, it's going to be a closed market where if there's no new Gen X coming in, everybody's going to be smoking and selling the same stuff in the stores. Right. I, I, I don't know. I, I honestly, I think, I think that they're getting, especially in Washington, you know, they're getting better and better every year about revamping their rules and, um, I, I think they'll keep, keep it open. And I think there's going to, something's going to happen maybe potentially on the federal level that'll change all this anyways. Yeah. Yeah. But it, as soon as it changes the federal level, all the, all, I mean, state, state rules could turn around and change too, especially with genetics and opening the door with new genetics coming in and stuff. It's interesting. A lot of, a lot of stuff coming, coming around the corner. 
Yeah. Hey, speaking of which, what do you, uh, I know you're doing some stuff with that blueberry. What else do you got going on now? <laughs> and when oh. do I get my hands on those blueberry seeds? <laughs> oh, I'll see you tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got your babies here, by the way. Right on, right on. Um, I'm actually, what I'm doing right now, I've been playing around a little bit with uh, some older stuff like uh, uh, the, the Black Triangle. I crossed Black Triangle and uh, with the Big Sur Holy Wheat. Ooh. And, and we're, we're in testing right now. I'm just sending testers out uh, this last week. I got uh, that blueberry. I crossed, I crossed that one to the Big Sur Holy Wheat. And testers are just now finishing up. And we're getting all kinds of cool uh, terpenes out of it. Uh, we got blueberry, we got piney blueberry, we got uh, lemon pledge out of it. I mean, because, uh, you know, Bixer Holy. And you got like a 50 50 uh, uh, cut there. And you got a little bit of weird stuff go going in, in there too, about 10%. Let's see, someone reported uh, tennis balls. A can of tennis, like fresh can of tennis balls is what it smelled that like. Rubber, yeah, that rubber. That's, that's from that blueberry, I'm telling you. Yeah, that's, that's really rubbery. <laughs> Well, you know, with that cross, because of the uh, Big Sur Holy Wheat, you know, big, you know, all the crosses, that, all the streams that were in that one. Um, I didn't think it, it was going to be that stable in the first F1 generation. But what I'm seeing is is uh, a lot of blueberry, about 50 percent blueberry showing up in the females. Hmm. On the reports. So, for folks out there listening, um, there was a, a cut up here in Washington. They called the five hundred dollar cut and um, not very many people held it. And um, it's a, we call it, you know, a pre-99 um, DJ short blueberry. It's a sativa dominant. Um, so basically it's, it's a squat little bugger, but thin leaves. And um, the high is up and shiny all day long. No burnout. You can just blaze it. And um, the most delicious blueberry flavor um, in a joint all the way through. Um, it, it's everybody's favorite. Everybody that I know, it's their favorite. Um you just can't, you can't get over it, you know. And I mean, the cut's been around for over twenty years, right? So, she's hard. You know, was the one, Mr. Hoko here was the one that that shepherded um, that plant through and shared it with a lot of us. And um, yeah, it's, it, if I if I was stuck on an island and could only have one herb or maybe two, yeah, that, that would be on here. Yeah, that one or Kim, Kim Double D. I, those are two of my favorite. But um, uh, that blueberry. Speaking of her, you know, she she's really hard to breed with. A lot of people think that, you know, that I think that's why you don't see a lot of blueberry breeders out there because that's not a very easy strain to play with. It, there's so many ways that, that it can go backwards on you. Um, and it has it on me, you know, after about 12 years of work and all of a sudden on my BX2s, I had, I had a shit storm going on. It's like, what the fuck? You know, it's like, you don't expect that after 12 years, but you know, it, it teaches you something when you get that deep on how to put, pull things back together. But, um, it's looking good on the BX3s. I don't, I don't know if you've seen any pictures I posted on Instagram. Man, you know, I need that smoke now. Bring it uh, over to me. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah I'll, br I'll bring you some. Yeah, I, I got some hanging here pretty soon, in about two days. Awesome. Awesome. Are you but, are you still doing stuff with dogs, Mel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the real dogs? Yeah. No, no. Just uh, <laughs> my own little personal dog. I do little dog tricks and stuff. She's got about 10, 15 tricks that she could do. Um, I'm not doing protection dogs or anything like that anymore. It's my body's like, can't handle it. I'm all broken up, Kaya, you know, yeah. you know, but, yeah, those, those dogs are no joke, <laughs> but, but I, I the, speaking of dogs, I, I am working the chem dog lines. The, the I like, uh, let's see, I got Bodie's cut the, uh, uh chem D and I, I hit that with my double D BX two. And oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> What, these are going through testing now, and I'm making F2s uh, real soon. And I'm going to probably test those before I make uh, drop them. But I'm going to redo that breeding, the double D back to uh, Bodie's D. That was that was a that that's a nice mix right there. Yeah, I love that Chem Double D. And what was the one that So Good Seeds did? Um, oh, that Dogon. It was uh, it was Star Dog Back Cross Two times uh, Double D. Oh man, I don't know. It was one of those, but man, that was amazing herbs. Holy cow! Holy but, but cow was good. You never got any of that Dolly Patron. That I used Chem Four, your Chem Four, and I crossed it to uh, my Double D, <laughs> and I called it. What? Well, see, see, uh, Greenspoon was supposed. To, he was my rep, right? He was supposed to release it as Dolly uh, Parton, 
because of the double D's, right? Right, right. <laughs> Couldn't fucking spell right. He <laughs> released to the world as Dolly Patron. <laughs> so, so I have <laughs> spell checked on your on your yeah. It was too late by the time it was released, man. It was already gone. <laughs> oh, that's too funny, Mel. But yeah, that was uh, one of them. But yeah, uh, that Kim Four, um, I I got her locked up in some seed forms. Uh, but I also got that cut coming back at you if you still want her. Yeah, I would love I would love to have the Chem Four cut. I have not had that plant in my uh, in my garden in a long time. I'll try to grab her next week. I'll, I'll, I'll come by and see you tomorrow. Then I'll, I'll come by and see you again next weekend with, uh, with the four. Okay. <laughs> yeah, deal. If you make it out to the farm this week, um, we're bringing down the greenhouse. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I should we're, we're gonna have your we're gonna have your daughter out there helping us again. She already told me she's so, so excited, man. <laughs> she loves working out there. Hey, you got you got like a guard goose out there, huh? Yeah, we got it. We got a goose, <laughs> Lucy, Lucy the goose. That's uh, Beard and Kraken is her uh, is her daddy, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the big old goose. And we got a couple ducks, and uh, some chickens, some hens, and a rooster, and uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a living farm out there. It's fun. Are you uh, are you doing your uh, Korean natural farming uh, in your commercial? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been making inputs. We made a, we had like a, a basically like a, we had Logan come out from um, Hawaii and he did a, like a, a farm session, uh, like a two day, three day class that we had out there. And we made a big, huge IMO pile and got all that kick started up. And um, I made a big old batch of OHN and we got the uh, FAA rolling. So, um, and he brought out a whole bunch of uh, calcium bicarbonate. So we were making the water soluble cow and, um, Cal hey. um, you know, we burn in the woods and burn in bones and, um, yeah, we got it all going on out there, Mel. <laughs> hey brother, how, how's your wife? See it, Mel. It's amazing. I gotta come out. I gotta come out. Hey, how's the, how's the wife and kids doing? Uh, they're doing great. They're upstairs watching a movie. It's, movie <laughs> night. it's Friday movie night. So, um, yeah, the babies, the babies are finally back in school. Um, and they're super stoked to ride on the bus and get to hang out. But, you know, we've just been keeping a low key and, um, getting up to the mountains and skiing, you know, spending our time up there. It's, it's a good, good way to get out and get some fresh air. Yeah. I hope, I hope you don't mind, but I shared uh, roughly your story. I didn't tell exactly how, cause you, you, you were there. I don't know. I, I just on how your baby son was born. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I think I was on uh, one of the, I can't remember which stream show I was on, but I just touched on it. I, I was talking about, you know what kind of person you were and how you delivered your own son on the freeway and it's like that was so cool you want to go into that takaya uh, <laughs> it, was it, was actually, it was actually really really cool i i was encouraging my wife to you know have have the baby at home anyways um and this was our, our third baby and um yeah she said hey i'm having contractions and you know we were getting everybody packed up and ready to go and um and our water broke and and before we knew it you know it was like we're, we're in the car racing to the hospital and you know i said you want me to pull over and get call an ambulance and she said no just just gun it so you know um the two girls were my babies were in the back seat um iris would have been uh two and then ella was i guess six and uh and tutu was back there grandma was back there um and you know we're doing 100 miles an hour over the Narrows Bridge, and Tutu's back there praying. And um, we came to a light there in North Tacoma on the way to the hospital, and she said, "It's baby's coming now." And I said, "Babe, five minutes, we're we're there." She said, "No, right now." Um, so right there at the intersection, we just you know turned the hazards on and jumped out, and um, you know Tutu basically had had the baby most of the way out, and uh, we wrapped him up in the in the hoodie and. Um, drove to the hospital after that it was it was really a, a really powerful experience you know seeing my wife's um instincts take over yeah you know, i mean i was just a servant at that point and um she, Man, did, said, she did all the hard work and amazing work i i just i was just there you know what, watching what her, an experience to, to be right there with your son being born it's just so it must have been so cool huh it was it was powerful it was really powerful. <laughs> I, was, I was proud of my wife i was like man this, <laughs> This woman just, whew, you know, <laughs> like she knew exactly what to do, you know, and um, and yeah, it's amazing. You got any more kids on on the way? 
Uh, you can't ask me that. Who are you talking to, Mel? <laughs> oh man, you know every every two years it seemed like uh, you had another one coming. Yeah, yeah. No, Lennox is he's six now, so six. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. He's uh he's skiing all the way from the top of the mountain <laughs> to the bottom. That bugger. <laughs> He's yeah. trouble. He really is. <laughs> are you uh, are you heading back to Hawaii anytime soon? You know, we we spent a good three months out there last year, and um, we've been hitting it pretty hard here. Um, I'll probably get out there maybe in a month when we get through. Um, we 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 just took down one of our indoor rooms. We're about to hit the greenhouse next uh, this coming week, and then um, then we've got one more twenty four lighter to to pop off in like two more weeks. And um, as soon as I get through that. And get everything washed out we'll have a little bit of a break and uh probably get home and and catch some sun and some surf and see if at, at one time at one point in time you, you mentioned something about maybe uh opening up a an operation there uh through licenses and stuff how'd that go did you ever uh, go through with that oh no yeah bad subject huh? <laughs> no we, we we did we put we put a lot of effort into um into trying to get a license out there they they had incredibly high barriers to entry. I mean, you had to you had to have some really crazy stuff. And you know, we found people to work with and um, put in our application and got denied for a technicality that wasn't. You know, they basically said said that uh, my wife wasn't old enough. Um, they said she wasn't 21, but that's incorrect. She was, you know well over 21. So, but by then they had already awarded. It was just crooked. I mean, I just come right out and say it. You know, it was super crooked the way that they did it. So um, we got boxed out, and um, the folks that are in there are in there, and good for them. Um, but yeah, that was. And, and hopefully, you know, they 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 go full legalization right now. It's just medical, and they've got basically. If if you got a license on any given island, there was a couple, two, two, one, two, or three depending on the size of the island. I think Oahu maybe had four, but Big Island had two. Um, and, and basically you got granted a monopoly um, to vertically integrate. So you got a couple gardens and you got a couple stores and nobody else could play. Um, I think that patients still can grow their own medicine there, but they've they've reduced their, um, their plant counts and stuff, just like they did here in Washington. I mean, it's the same story no matter what state you're in. When when the government wants your your tax dollars, they're going to shut down your medical services and stuff because that's that's what they're doing. You know, that's the model. So just just quickly, there there's a Dutch Blooms sighting. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up, man? Yeah. I've, been, I've been lurking in the comments, talking shit this whole time. <laughs> Why can't I see the comments when I'm on here? Damn it. <laughs> you got to be on YouTube. But Man, I'm so not technically savvy, Mel. Quit. Nice <laughs> to see you, Mel. How you doing, man? How you doing, bro? Good. I'm doing good. Yeah, I've been wanting to leak up with you, man, for a minute. Uh, we, we, we we met briefly at, at uh, Shango's deal a couple years ago. I think it was last uh, last spring. Or maybe two springs ago. I don't remember, man. Yeah. It's been, yeah, it's you know how my you know how memory goes, especially. When I'm <laughs> but yeah, for sure, we gotta hook up and and uh, yeah, talk a little bit, smoke a joint, see what's up. I heard you're doing some breeding. Trying to, trying to. <laughs> I'm 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 looking through some stuff and uh, finding some stuff and. Dude, you want to talk about like looking at some shit? This dude has been look. He got. <laughs> He popped more seeds in the smallest area. Just, I went through there and there was a bunch of crazy, crazy. This patch is this and this patch is that. He had so much good stuff up there to look at and smell. It was like kid in a candy store. <laughs> right on, man. Right yeah, on. man. I got I got blessed because I I did the conference right and um, you know, so pe I just got to meet a lot of cool people, you know, and and they fucking hooked me up. And so, I I was the the real truth of it is. Um, I was, I've been struggling to, to be at the 502 thing, you know, I've, I've struggled to make money and, but it's, I own the, the whole thing. It's on my, it's on my property. So I just started 
shift in my perspective and realizing I can do some cool damage because I can run a lot of seeds and, and my are client. You, are you doing a tier three, tier, tier two or tier one? I got a tier two and, and uh, so I am actually <laughs> taking on a tier three um, as well, but I'm, I'm going to keep all my seed stuff on the tier two. You know, it's enough for me. Um, I'm looking good. for a tier one. If you know anybody wanting to get out. <laughs> yeah, man, that's the one to get. There's, there's a big push. Yeah. I uh, I'm not re wasn't really trying to get this tier three, but a, a friend of mine it, it just it was they need help and it's just really working out really well. So um, it, there's a processor guy that's getting involved, and I'm it, I, I've been really excited, man, to be honest, because the market has shifted uh, in my mind, and and Kaya has been the biggest fucking wind in my sails in terms of he's been processing hash and selling it and sending money to me, like. That that hadn't happened for a while, honestly. <laughs> you know, it used to be like normal, like that's just how we did shit. But like, man, once since I got in the legal game, that didn't happen, and and it it just happened. And I, I fucking super grateful to have you in my life, and um, really, it, yeah, you know, man, so it's, it's, good, it's a good karma. time to be in five hundred two. Just good karma, man. You you know, you put out good karma, you're gonna get it back. That's the way I look at. You know, Mary Jane always takes care of who takes care of Mary Jane. That's you know, it's always been that way. And she'll she'll wash out the the, the losers too. I mean, you know, they're, they're they'll be around for a little bit, but they don't stay around that long. <laughs> well, I wonder if I maybe like I just am a tough <laughs> tough son of a bitch loser because I got a hard fucking shake, man. <laughs> <laughs> Like, are you gonna stick around, son of a bitch? Bro, you're immortal. You cannot be killed. No <laughs> killing can't be killed. No stopping can't be stopped. <laughs> yeah, that's, no. the only way, that's the only way to be in this in this industry because you know there's so many fucking roadblocks going through this life. You know this type of life. That if you don't have thick skin, you ain't gonna make it. I mean, you know, you're gonna quit. There's so it's so easy to quit. I think we've all been there. <laughs> but it's so fucking easy to quit. But, you know, the people that make it are the ones that tough it out and keep on going. Well, and the power of working with people too, you know, like um, some guys try to start a business and do, and do it kind of in the, the American, you know, CO2 or CEO, you know, top down. And like that works for some people, but, you know, I don't know. I'm just, start, I'm starting to like, Kai is one guy I've been working with, but there's a sunny land grown. He's on here in the chats. He's been out helping on the farm and it's been really cool. And I'm working with starting to work with Rob from Seattle, Seattle chronic seeds. And I like, I like him. Yeah. He's super cool. And that is, it's just like night and day. I just, I don't know. I'm feeling really jazzed about 2021 and working with everybody. And, you know, it just feels, I just have a, a, a bouncing my step about the whole whole thing you right know on, right on i could see a difference man from you know just a few months ago yeah yeah <clears throat> right on man it's good good to see them, really good them to viewers see. in the market right now <laughs> we're, we're about to just keep them smashed up here <laughs> yeah, it's cool it's cool working with the two licenses you know because because it, it just is not, we didn't even really plan it out, but I just harvested in December and now he's bringing down and then it's going to go plunk, 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 plunk. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and having partner farms where you can share genetics and share best practices and, um, you know, especially again, both you again, it, your network is your net worth. You know what I mean? Like try, try standing on your own and, and it's going to be difficult when you got, when you got good people, um, to fall back on and, and everybody's really pushing for this, you know, a, a common goal. It's a powerful thing. It's a real powerful thing. And, um, man, we're seeing it in action. So, um, yeah, we're about to drop some, some of the, uh, some of this really beautiful RSO from Josh's garden, um, out to people. And, uh, we also got some, some really crips flowers, by the way, send me, send me some extra for the head. I hope you know, so I can, you know. Who makes the RSO and again? I'm with it, you know. <laughs> how with, how with your cataracts? <laughs> I, I'm excited to get that uh, that that cut down to you. The um, I'm gonna I, I I announced it the other night on the show. I'm calling it Black Wap Gas. Um, mm. in the black Black Wap Gas and Black Wap Fruit, the uh, the Testarossa BLR, because the uh, yeah, that's what I'm going with. No, no, I went up, I went up and I walked the farm up there and he had, 
he had so many different female. It was unbelievable. And um, at the end of the walk, we went in and he said, I think I really like this one. I think this is my best one. And it was the most, this plant was just black. It was super dark and, and it had, I, I squeezed it and it, and it just, it, the gas on it was just overwhelming. It was, it was really incredible plant. So um, yeah, I think you got a winner. That's a, that's a major winner. That one right there. Yeah. And it's in it. I mean, I, I like. feel like what's up. What she smoke like? It's, it's exactly like the flavor. It's so when I was go when I when I when I was looking at it originally, I was wanting the um, I was rolling dog walker and Skittles, like a little bit of Skittles in in with the dog walker joints, and that's what kind of what I was after. Um, and but this one is like, so I I really wanted to hit that Skittles, and I really wanted to hit that what I kind of like have a hard time describing that I think is the the chem four kind of like almost a lucky charms marshmallowy gassy flavor i don't know that's kind of the way i think of it the, in a, the how it comes through in the gorilla glue a little bit yeah um, yeah, yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah, i know what you're talking about so yeah. i wanted that with the with the skittles flavor just a little bit of it in there and that's the the female that i selected on the on the for the first one and then this this was from the f2 i think i had like 1200 1500 seeds and um i i caught this one at the very end and i was just like oh buck and i and i rank, yanked the whole plant up and you saw it you know i think four weeks later um, <laughs> i yanked the whole plant right out of the bed put it in a pot took the cuts off the the nug the nugs and flowers you know and and uh rooted them and and prayed to god that i was going to get the sucker to reveg, and she did and and <laughs> it was a rough ride i had a couple of ones that popped up and then i couldn't get them back you know what i mean and it was like i finally got that it was like the last one i'm like oh man oh man <laughs> Oh man, please don't let me lose this. You're, you're not gonna take. I mean, you had thousands and thousands of plants out there. You're not gonna take uh, a cuts of every single one of those. You can't and, and track them, and then at the end of the cycle, oh, I got it. Like you're just not gonna do that. So you, you're, you know, revenge game or 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 uh, you know, cloning the the bud at the end there. You know, you. It's always what, a risk, but you. That's really your only option. What's your revenge game like? What's the percentage? Oh, when I first started, it was shit, man. I've, I've been getting my ass kicked for like three or four years on it. Um, now I'm getting mo what will what if I what I did this last time with the cherry pie lime is I just left them right in the beds instead of ripping them out. Usually it's end of the season, October. And so I'll, I'll go through with a shovel and I'll kind of slice around the, the, the thing and I'll and I'll give it like three or four days and I'll come back and do a, a little push and I just kind of slowly break the root break it up right and try to do slow the stress down you know before that I've, I've trimmed it down to a third of what it was you know and then I throw it in a new pot and just water the fuck out of it throw it in the corner so it's not under direct light and that was how I used to do it and now um, I'm just leaving them right in the beds if I can and flipping them right back to lights. And I, start, I hit them every day with the fulvic acid, just a little bit. You know, I don't want to get too deep in the buds or anything. Just get a, a real quick spray with the fulvic acid. Um, you know, if we do a little bit of nitrogen, if I can, you know, and whatever alfalfa type shit, you know, that's it. And I just be patient. And, you know, right, right now, this is, I think, week three or four. So, so what, what would you say? What percentage are, are you getting on your uh, survivals? Uh, for, at, at, uh, right now I'm on week four and I have probably out of 20, 20 ish plants. I probably have two to three already started with like, you know, pop something popped up and, and almost everything else has green in there where I'm like, it's coming in, in Sunnyland. He's in the back. He can probably verify. We go in there every morning and, and so you're getting good survival rates off your yeah, I'm getting pretty good. At it. Yeah, but it, but it, I, it took me a while, and I've lost a lot of shit. You know, learning. I, I'm up to about if I do 20 on the reveg, I get about 19 back. Yeah. What? <laughs> Tell us, Mel, what's your process? I just uh, cut them back. See, I'm in pots. I'm not in 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 the ground. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just cut them back. Uh, I leave four four nodes up. Two two four nodes, you know, two branches up when I harvest and uh, I don't even transplant. I just water straight water for about a week, wash all that uh, food out that whatever's left. And then I start feeding really light 
And the main thing when, when you're revegging, uh, people tend to overwater. That's how you kill your reveg. You don't want to overwater. You they, just don't, they, they just shut down for like a week yeah. or two and they don't do Cause, shit. Because they, they, they have no respiration up top. There's nothing to take that water out of the dirt, right? Because you cut all the top off when you harvest it. So you got to uh, alter your watering. You got to cut back. You got to keep it just barely alive. But then I go 24-7 on my light too. That that really helps. I, um, man, about 10 years ago, maybe longer, I answered a, when we were doing uh, Craigslist clones, you know, in Port, this is back when I lived in Portland. I went went to go get some some clones from this guy, and and he just invited me over and brought me into his space, and he he must have had I don't know it was twenty four or thirty some some lights in his in his garage type deal, real nice setup, and he I started looking close, and he he revegged the whole thing, and that's how he grew every time he would reveg he he, he would do it three he would go three cycles I think he told me, and he was just running buds he was running check, check it out I I do the same thing you know what. People said that, that buds get smaller. I mean, uh, I, I know some experienced growers tell me not to do it this way because the, you get smaller buds, but that's not true. Uh, if you cut everything back and you regrow it through veg cycle correctly, it grows just like a regular plant, except for you got a bigger base. I mean, you're gonna when you go through flower again, you're gonna have huge colas if you do it right. And I, I've, I've flowered a plant. Uh, the most I've uh, flowered one plant was either four or five times. I can't remember. That's cool. That's cool. And it, it could be done. I mean, just but you got to also treat the roots right. You got to cut back the roots a little bit, and you know, put it in a new pot every time you you know you go back into veg. Yeah, I don't remember if he told me if he did that or not. I mean, that was a long time ago. But that's cool, man. That's really cool. Yeah, it's, it, man. It could. I used to when I used to uh, grow commercially back in the '80s and stuff. I. It, you didn't want to go out and do a lot of clones because you have to go through a lot of supplies. You didn't want to go get supplies, right? So you want to just do one big bed of clones as much as you can, as many as you can. And you had one mother that I used to have just one mother. The, my mother stayed stay around for between five and seven years, each mother. And when, when you know, they got woody, the, the st stocks got really thick and woody. That's when I would switch them out. I'd flower the mothers and bring in a new one. But they would stick around so that I wouldn't have to fuck with it. I would just have one mother. I mean, I would only I, I, at that time I only grew two strains, so it was really easy. I didn't have to label anything that could tell them apart just by the look. You know, one was more uh, indica leaning, and the other one was a little bit more sativa leaning. It was really easy to do it that way when you had two extremes, and and you didn't have to label. Labeling is, you know, when you're doing commercial like that, even labeling and Kai, you know this, it takes time. And every time you, you're putting time into your grow, you're there. You're going to get busted if you. Every time you enter your grow, you're risking getting busted, right? So you don't want to spend as much time as you, you don't, you don't want to be there if you don't have to be. And, and if you're labeling, you know, that's, you're doing shit that you don't have to be doing and you're just putting your ass on the line for nothing, you know. Hey, there's still people out there living like that. I know, I know. There's, there's a, you know, bless, bless them, bless them, bless those renegades, man. You know, because yeah. we live those life, we live that life, and I know how hard it is. It just there's some states out there still illegal, and man, I, I, I pray for them. I'm in their corner. I mean, they're they're the ones that you know that they, they they are doing what we did, you know, hiding from the law and hiding from the fucking rippers. It wasn't the law; it was the fucking rippers that I was scared of. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as you let like medical come in or 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 recreational, and, and you let people grow and stuff, fuck man, the rippers disappeared. They were gone. You know, I don't know. I think, you know, commercial when when it wasn't worth uh, them getting shot, breaking into your you know garage or warehouse. You know, it, I don't know when you got a store on every block and you can buy a gram for five bucks. Why you know why break into someone's house to try to steal some weed? <laughs> right. Yeah. No. For real. My buddy. Uh... Kenny Mount Baker Highway. He's got a legal farm up here, you know, uh, not too far from me. And I, I think it was two or three years in a row. Somebody came by and stole from him, hopped the fence, took a bunch of stuff. You know, it was obviously someone in the area. You know, he'd call us. Uh, there's just not much that could be done about it. You know, it wasn't. It was a bummer. You know, and he's such a nice guy. He just took it with, you know, whatever. And and 
then this the last time it happened the dude and we have videos right we have cameras so you can see everything you, he should posted a video of the dude jumping over and landing directly on a t-post <laughs> oh man up, uh, dude, right up, back. that's karma for you yeah. <laughs> never came back oh <laughs> movie track you, you want to hear a fucking back in the 80s i was hanging out with these guys that well they taught me to grow it was a little click and uh but they were all like uh cranksters right they, they were bikers and they, they did crank and stuff and i wasn't really into that but they would like rip each other off of each other's crops i mean they would kick each other's doors down and take the crop and they, you know the, they would never fight over it, but they would just rip each other off. And I remember riding around with Ed one day. I said, where are we going? He goes, oh, we're going by Joey's. I said, isn't Joey working right now? He goes, yeah, that's why we're going by there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, fuck, I, why? I sat in a van. He pulled out a chainsaw. He cut right through the fucking side of the house and pulled out the plants. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, that kind of shit doesn't happen now. I hope it doesn't happen now, but i seen that kind of shit happen. It's like, That's whoa. crazy, dude. <laughs> What? <laughs> Chainsaw right through the house. Yeah. I mean, what what's he going to do? Call oh, the cops? Crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You're killing me, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy world back then. But, you know, these guys, they always, they had the bills in their pocket. And we went to the highest, you know, all the big restaurants in, in, on the strip over by uh, the airport. All the fucking top class restaurants and shit. We'd eat there almost every day. I never paid for anything. I was I was kind of like like their dealer. I I, I sold all their weed. <laughs> and they they treated me I was like oh fuck yeah. But you know I probably I probably made more money than them because you know I know what I paid them for a quarter pound, and I made three times that. So I made bank. You know they they were happy with you know me get you know selling five selling five pounds for them every week, but I was happier. <laughs> Too funny. But that's how I started growing, Kai. One of those dudes, uh, he, he became my mentor. He was, uh, his, his name was uh, Ed Hilton. And hopefully he's still alive. He was about 10, 15 years older than me. He had, he had cancer, I remember, and that's what got him into growing. He had, uh, he had a tumor on his ear. He had his whole ear removed. And I remember him wearing like a Band-Aid tape over his ear all the time. But um, yeah, we, we we were into remote control car racing. I was trying to break my cocaine habit back then, so I tried to break myself. Uh, uh, <laughs> money. So I, I got into uh, remote control cars, and he was uh, pitting with me, and and he always had the dank, and he turned around, and sold me a, a quarter for like twenty bucks, and I was like, oh, that dude's growing. You know, as soon as I he sold me a quarter for twenty bucks, I was like, yeah, that dude's growing. So I got you know I hung around with him, and I said, hey, you want me to turn some of your shit? And he didn't know I, I knew a lot of people and I was turning shit like, boom, I was five pounds. It was no problem that, you know, I was, he, I sold, I sold out. I, every time he, he cropped out, I, I was his drop. I, he would hit me with five pounds every, every, well, every four or five days, <laughs> every time I called him, but it, we started on a front and before you knew it, I was, I was given, I was paying up front for, for pounds, you know, like he, here's, here's a, Here's a thousand bucks for a half pound. <laughs> you know, prices back in the day were serious. Yeah. But, uh, what uh, got you into breeding, though? Um, my last bus, when I lost Lemon and Hoko, because those are those two strains I, I grew for about 22 years. Um, because I've, I've bred dogs and I've bred a lot of things in my life, right? I, 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 especially dogs. I bred dogs, working dogs, Belgian Malinois for over 22 years. Oh, dang, I didn't realize. Yeah, out of my lines that I bred and worked, I had over 300 working titles on my dogs, working right. titles. And and uh, with that kind of confidence about breeding, I, after I lost my lemon and hoko, I said, shit, I'll just remake, I'll, I'll just rebreed, you know, that strain. I can, I can breed it. <laughs> I've, been cha I've been chasing the, I've been, there's one, and Kaya knows this, I've been asking him about it for years. Um, it's now changed. The name has changed, but the 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 eighty the eighty five Maui Wowie the, the electric Maui, I've been looking for that. That's the component of the Hoko that's missing that I need to find. And is that the I mean, 
is the the cherry bomb. You know, uh -oh. you know, from Mean Mean Jeans. He's got the Mary Wow. He calls it the cherry bomb. No, this is different. This the. It, this was fruity, but it wasn't cherry. I mean, when we when I smoked it, it was. See, I, I pushed about when it came in. It only came in one time. It was like here for about three months, and then it, it stopped. It we never saw it again. The Maui. It was in, in Washington at that time, and I probably had my hands on between two and three or four pounds somewhere in there, but it wasn't a lot. I was selling it by the ounces back then, but um, it was back in the eighties. 200 bucks an ounce that was a lot yeah. right and i was getting 200 bucks an ounce i think that the normal price was 100 or 124 for an ounce of uh, green weed green bud and i was getting 200 for the maui but the maui was it was that one weed that you could sit around and smoke a bowl or a joint with like four or five people and not really say anything and all of a sudden you look at somebody in the room and you just bust out laughing. You don't even know why you're laughing, right? And everybody starts laughing. You, kind of, you know what I'm talking about? It's that uncontrollable laugh, right? That Maui did it to you. And I can never find weed like that that would do that to me. Northern Lights did that to me in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny shit. <laughs> yeah, those that that was uh, that was some of the the epic strains that I remember. Um, the Maui, uh, man, there's there's some really good ones back then. You know, you know, Chem Dog. The, the the reason why I really like Chem Dog a lot, and, and it, it's only because I've tasted that. I, that that's a real familiar terpene to me. That I smoked it as a kid when I was like twenty years old, twenty five years old. I, I I came across that flavor before. And now when I got older, it's like, man, I got, I just gravitated to it, towards it because it's very, very familiar. It reminds me of when I, when I was a kid. So I don't know if you guys, the, the I don't D, right? What's that? You're into the D. Oh, I like them all, man. I, I, all. I've smoked Sis. I smoked four. I smoked D. I smoked uh, 91. I, I've had 91 for a little bit, but I never got to flower. <laughs> I lost her. I lost her before I, I put her in the flower. It was uh skunk VA's 91. I want to try to get it again. It's it's in that northwest here. I could probably grab it, but yeah, I might have a line on it. I've, uh, yeah, I got, to, I got to smoke it. I got to meet him in in um, Colorado this year and, and smoke a couple buds. He was kind enough to hook me up with some buds to just you know lock in the flavor, you know, like right. And so it was it was cool. Hey, I might get him on my Breeders Cast. I, I messaged him on Instagram and say, hey, you want to come over on Breeders Cast? I'd love to have you as a guest. He goes, I, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> it was a short, short little response, but yeah, that's cool. But yeah, Two Tone Willie, he he came by with some uh, some bud for the ninety one. Uh, uh, it was really nice. He, he he does a really good job in growing. I don't know if you guys ever smoke his weed. I that's did. I, I met him in Portland a number of years back. Oh my god, that dude can fucking grow. Yeah. He he's one he's one of the you know he's one of the guys that could probably win a cup pretty easy. I would say. We did a, they did a dude grows thing in Portland. Um, this is a number of years ago, 2017, maybe um, something like that. Anyways, and, and, and we went, they went down, they came up to, to visit me and, and, and see my greenhouse. And then we all hopped in the cars and went down to Portland and they did a comp there and everyone just put jars on the table and the, the you know, jar with the less weed one and he it was him dude by far you know <laughs> <laughs> i love that that's the best that's got to be the best <laughs> that's a cool way of judging we too oh man i love it it was a fun show dude and steve that's steve fire. dread was there steve, steve dread <laughs> you know potent ponics and he was he had this i don't know he was doing this crazy chemistry shit where he was you know, giving people extracts that were like, you know, he'd be like, this is 40 milligrams. I'd be like, I'll take two of those. And he'd be like, no, bro. And I'd take one. I ended up, I just was like, you know, <laughs> just, they call me foreskin eyes. I get the, the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have drops coming up or what are you doing with your seeds? Let these people I'm, know. I'm, uh, I'm still testing. You know, I was actually, you know, the, the my buddy Nick Risden, 
who I, I, I work with breeding and we, we we're, we're starting a brand. We haven't dropped yet, but we're, we're, we're testing right now. But he, uh, he was a German shepherd breeder, uh, and did, did, you know, all that stuff, you know, testing is very, very important, man. You know, foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> Test, yeah, testing is real important. Even in dog, you know, for for dog uh, breeding, it, we don't. It, it's the same thing as what we're doing with cannabis. With with puppies, let's say if I want to do a ring sport or Schutzen work or police work with a puppy, we don't. I don't just take a puppy and say I'm going to train it. You got to test the puppy to see if it has the right traits to do the type of work that you want it to do. Right? There's what they call prey instinct and defense. See, there's only two people don't know this. Not a lot of people don't know this, but some people do. There's only two reasons a dog will ever bite in nature. One is self-protection. If a bear is going to eat a wolf, it will protect itself. And the second one is to, for the dog to eat, prey. So you got defense and prey. And those two traits are inherent in, it, in every dog breed no matter what every dog has a level of defense and every dog has a level of prey some dogs prey levels are here and their defensive levels are way, way low and some dogs are the opposite meaning that if you even look at a dog they'll growl and bark at you while they're very defensive some dogs if you jump real quick they'll try to bite you because they're very prey oriented they, they react by movement so those are those two instincts that we we, we test for and we promote through breeding and, and, and so forth and training, you know, okay. Testing in dogs, testing for those traits opens the door for the breeding part, for the training part. Cause you, if you don't test, if the dog doesn't have those, the correct traits, the training is going to be very, very hard. It's going to be. It's like Jedi's. Yeah. <laughs> Well, just for, yeah, like, Nick, cannabis, Nick, like, when Nick would tell me about it, I mean, they would start like day one, you know, there or day, you know, there he was doing little movements and trying to get him to follow. And I mean, he, he was telling me like the, the selection process, just like with seedlings. Well, you know? with, with Malin was that their eyes uh, focus at about 27 days, which is about, you know, three and a half, four weeks. That's when you start putting a movement like a, a, a piece of burlap where you move move things in front of the puppy's eyes to see if it'll follow that's one way of testing to see whether see with with the working dogs what we want is fast development we don't want a dog that their eyes develop uh, slower than another puppy's eyes so we want because the faster they develop the earlier they can train it, it, when when i was training my working puppies they would be biting the man in the suit before they, they were even teething at 12 weeks old, I could send him on a man and the little puppy, yep. bam, but they'd bite a man on the suit. And this is all through selection, through genetics, and then training. You have to motivate the, the puppy to do that. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, and, it, and it crosses over to cannabis. It's the same thing for cannabis. What we're doing for cannabis is we're doing the same thing. We're, we're selecting, we're uh, testing for traits and then moving them forward through breeding. Same thing with dogs except for we're focusing on different things with cannabis. Right. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does to me. I mean, that's, that's been the, like, the, the cool friendship I, with Nick is I've just been learning about this and actually here's, one of his dogs right here is from his last breeding uh, right here. Here's the difference between breeding plants and, and dogs that I found that it's a really, really strict difference. It's a black and white difference with plants. You, you can go generational and then back back cross with dogs. You can't really do that because you can't really clone a dog. Keep keep the, the, the P1 generation around for a long time. You, you only have a certain amount of time to breed with it. So if you're going to do any back crossing or inline breeding with an animal, it has to be done within a three to four year span. Or you life. could freeze the semen, though. Right. Yeah, but the, if you do that, technology back in the day when I was doing that, it was the frozen semen, um, it was it was it wasn't as successful. It was like the success rate was below fifty percent. I don't know what it is now, but it was below fifty percent. And 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 then you know who knows what kind of chromosome damage the frozen semen. Sure. Is. Right. <laughs> There's all kinds of factors. I think doing it natural, anytime you can do it natural by nature is probably the best way of doing it, in my opinion. 
because they're because yeah. you're letting you're letting the, the force you know here's another thing that people don't think about is is you know we're all creatures of water and and electricity right i mean that's what we have in us that's what drives us is, is electrical impulses to our, our 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 nerves and our brains and so forth and and there's got to be some sort of factor that 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 relates to when uh the sperm gets together with the egg there's there's still two different creatures but they're still operating with those same impulses with electricity and so forth so what's to say that that you know the lineup isn't always the same? Let's say, and, and that's what that's. I think that's where you have the genetic difference. Like you, your two brother. If you have a brother, he's not going to be exactly like you, but you are brothers. Why aren't you exactly alike? It's from the same sperm and same uh, uh, egg donor. It should be exactly by by theory, unless there's a lot of recessives involved, but. I'm saying that because there's other factors that we don't consider, magnetism, electricity, uh, uh, humidity, pressure, uh, atmospheric pressure, all those can be factors in the process of conception right when it conceives. And if, if, you're, if you have conception in one environment and then you have a conception in a different environment, you could have two different types of growth out of both cells. Sure. So we don't consider all those things. And this is with pet plant breeding. Say so if you make a cross between my blueberry back cross, if I made the same cross, blueberry back cross three, I'm going to cube it. And I cubed it in the wintertime. Will those seeds grow up the same as if I cubed it in the summertime? Two different atmospheres working on, on the cross. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we, we talk about that a lot. Like when you're, when you're breeding, if you're breeding indoors versus if you're breeding, you know, full cycle, full natural cycle outdoors, you know what I mean? They're they're getting they're getting some different stuff, right? And if you keep breeding in that soil and growing in that soil year after year, there's a, there's a there's a relationship between the microbes that are happening there, between the environment, right? And it becomes dialed in. It becomes more hardy. It becomes, you know, that's there's something to that, right? That's that's the adaptogenic property of, of the cannabis plant. I mean, most plants, any of them, right? That's how they survive. I agree. Pretty, yeah. Do you and do I, I would tell you too, right? They say with, with humans, right, that we ha we're, we're like a, a hundred or a thousand uh, bacterial cells per human cell, right? So we're way far more, we're 10 to 1 more bacterial than we are even human. Um, what about in, in plants, you know? And, and in humans, that's the part of the DNA that can that can move a little bit, right? Human DNA doesn't really change in our lifetime, but, but yet we put us in different environments, right? We're going to put clone you and, and put you in a bunch of different environments and you're going to develop differently. And that's, that's those microbes that are part of your body, even adapting. Right. So I, I would imagine the same kind of stuff is happening with plants as, as they're um, interacting with the microbes in the soil and interacting with the environment at the same time. You know, I mean, that's, that's the, that's, that's the natural information that they're inputting. Um, and then the genetic stuff is, is, is making its choices inside of the plant. Here's one up for you, Kai. Okay, that makes sense what you're saying. But we none of us really consider, you guys, I keep on hitting on this. And, and, and I did stir some conversation a few months ago with somebody um, about the golden ratio, the Fibonacci code. That's in every everything that, in nature. It has to be, it has to have a play. You know, we saw the pennant, pennant square uh, come up, uh, uh, and that's Mendelin's law, right? But when Mendel wrote the Punnett square or discovered or uh, described the Punnett square, he never considered, I don't think he considered the Fibonacci code, the golden ratio, and how it plays into it. Why not? It has to. It just makes sense that it has to, right? Yeah, unless you can think of a reason why it would be excluded. I mean, if, if, it, if it's in, in every scenario. I, I always think the coolest part of that, Mel, is uh, we talk about it in, in, in the Korean natural farming stuff, right? So w when you make your ferments, you're only filling up the jar two thirds of the way so that you've got that, that, that golden, that, that ratio. And, and that's without that, you, you need that, right? And then when they talk about earth, where we live, and then the atmosphere, it's also a golden ratio, right? So center of the earth to the deal is like two thirds and then outer crust to the top of the atmosphere is the one third, right? So it's, it's like, we're in that fermenting zone, everything we're fermented, you know, and so to speak, right? I mean, that's, 
That's why we're alive, the microbes. We're, they're there with us, we're there with them, and without that ratio, we wouldn't exist. So, so j just quickly, uh, I told Tyler you guys were talking about dog semen, and he was like, "I could contribute to that conversation." So, Tyler, with that, with that, with that, welcome to the conversation. I was like, "Dog semen," I got right fucked up. I was like, "Let's do this." I was reading books, getting the kids down, sort of speak out to the old uh, hut. Do some smoking, some shucking of some beans. I got some uh, badass fucking uh, Pam 1 and Pam 15 to the Testarossa Black Line Reserve I got from Josh sitting right there. Uh, some of the beans. I selected a cool fuel mill out of there. I'm doing all the pulling the seeds out of there. They're all beautiful. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get ready to go to work. I got coffee brewing. And uh, the, my second shift starts now. I got to wake up, do some fruit trees in the morning. And, <laughs> pollinating some dog walker earlier, man. There's fucking no rest for the wicked, dude. You know this guy. You this guy is always working, man. He's like me. <laughs> like I, I'll text him, and it'll be like 12 p.m., 12 a.m., or be like 4 a.m. He's always working. You know, yep. Just <laughs> up doing something. Team sleep. <laughs> up doing something, man. It's a crazy time of year right now. We got fruit trees like a motherfucker and. It's it, we haven't been as cold as we normally are, and trees are waking up. People are panicking, you know. Their peaches and shit are waking up, and everybody's got shit they need to get, you know, prepped and ready and planted and pruned and all that shit. So I've I've been going like nonstop, twenty four seven, you know. Um, can I can can I ask you about avocados in, in terms of yeah, in terms of terms? You you know avocados, right? So yeah, I, I have a I I, I grew. I think this is a pertinent, to, pertinent to our discussion. Maybe I hope it is. I, I grew a couple of avocados from pits, and they're about eight years old, just not, just for bullshit reasons, you know. And yeah. uh, and uh, I, I was online the other day, early in the morning or something, and saw some guy talking about. He's like, "Oh, one in ten thousand avocados is good," and I'm like, "Ah, oh, come on, bro, one in ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Give me a fucking break. One in ten thousand. And and right then, but right then and there, I ordered. Uh, some some four year old avocados, from... <laughs> you know, because I right. Yeah. But uh, I know you popped a lot of avocados, and so I just was curious as in you're in avocado country, you know, like talk about well, avocados at first. It's definitely you know. not one in ten thousand. Um, it's um, most of the time people don't have the patience uh, to get them to start bearing. You know, around here it'll take them ten years. You know, eight to ten years to start bearing. And a problem with avocados, people think that they'll plant a seed and it won't be, it won't be viable or whatever. It will never produce or any of those things. And those are crazy things. And, and the reason, the reason why that, that, that whole misconception happens is because there's A types and there's B types of avocados, right? And like, it takes an avocado a while, like an A type, right? Is a, is a Haas. Okay. Good example. Haas is an A. Uh, always an A. Every Haas you ever seen came from a cutting. Cutting is an A. Uh, Reed is an A. There's 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 B's. Square days are B's. Bacon's are B's. <clears throat> but what the importance of that is when the flowers open on A types, and I always get it mixed up. But the first day that the flowers open, they're all male parts, and then that they close up. You know, after their period of time, their day or two, or their evening, or their cycle, and then they reopen again, and they've changed sex, and they're female parts, right? So the, uh, a single flower tassel on an A plant, a young little plant that's only been around for a while, you know, a short period of time can set a flower tassel out. And they usually don't set a whole bunch of flower tassels that are opening and closing at different times. It's usually just one or two good flower, you know, stalks that are all opening and closing on the same schedule. And you don't get pollination that way unless you have a B type avocado because the B has the opposite flower cycle schedule, right? So whatever they is, the first day they open their, their one sex and then they close up, the bee is the opposite and they do the same thing the, the opposite way. So when every avocado grows around the world or, you know, wherever they grow avocados, they'll plant 10, you know, 10 uh, hosses or, you know, whatever for every one bacon or every one zutano or every one fuerte so that you ensure that you have a bee, you know, flower or, or another type of avocado that's on a on an opposite, you know, type of schedule where the, there'll be more male and female parts present. But 
that same Haas avocado can produce its own fruit by itself after a long time of growing and becoming mature because when it sets flowers when it's old and mature it's setting some flowers that are opening today and then some flower stalks are opening tomorrow and next week so they're all on you know all on alternate schedules and it has male and female parts present more likely and it can kind of pollinate itself as, as it gets older that's why you always hear like avocados won't produce fruit for 10 years or you know 12 years or seven years from a seed um, it's just because it needs to have that maturity to be able to set flower tassels that are open at a different time so it can pollinate itself. Um, but as far as the fruit being good, like every avocado we've ever gotten has been a chance seedling. You know what I mean? It was a chance seedling at some point. You know, a, a reed, a zutano, a mexicola, you know, mexicola grande, uh, you know, charwalconas, the fucking list goes on. Lamb hawks, they were all chance seedlings at one point, you know, in a grove. Something happened. All bag seed. Yeah, all bag seed, right? Yeah. Somebody, somebody fucking saw this random thing growing in the grove. It was it a had good one. Fruit at a different time than the other trees, right? A good one is the one they call Crazy Hoss, right? In in Florida, there was one called Crazy Hoss, and it's called Carmen. It's called Hoss Carmen, and it was held held tight. It was like it was like the sour D or the chem dog of the avocado world, right? And it's this avocado that ripened earlier than all the other Hoss avocados that had this this extra you know this extra crop beforehand and it has these these characteristics that were unlike all the other fruit and it was basically just a chance seedling of a rotten piece of fruit that fell on the ground and sprouted and over that period of time you know uh it was able to be pollinated a little sooner because it's around a bunch of other avocado trees so you'll get sooner production in that way you know better pollination if it does flower but it does take them a little while to, to reach maturity to set flowers get pollinated and then go through the whole process of of selecting the fruit. So, like, another thing with avocados that makes it hard, which is a whole other fucking thing that makes it hard to <laughs> tell if your avocado is any good from a seed, is that, like, every <clears throat> avocado has a has a, a season where your, your oil content has to get to a certain um, a, a peak ripeness point, right? Like, hosses are <clears throat> usually, like, March to March to June. They have one of the longest seasons. But my fuerte, we start picking like Christmas is like when I start picking my fuertes, January to, to about March is when I'm eating my fuertes. And if I don't get them off by March, then I miss my flower cycle. But all that means is if I pick them at a different time, they'll be nice and big, like say in October, um, many months before they're ready. They'll look like store quality avocados. They'll be big and ripe and beautiful. But if you pick that avocado out of season, then it it's watery doesn't taste good if it ripens up or it will wrinkle and not not be any good and edible at all because the oil content isn't right in it to be able to hold it through the the, the ripening process right so if you have a chance seedling you don't know when the fuck to pick it right so it looks like it's ready for for half the season you know what i mean when they're hanging there if it does get to the point where it's actually set fruit you don't know when to pick it so it takes you a couple of years to but wouldn't you though just dropping. buy like feel, like huh? you know, like like they most of us would eat avocado. The they don't ripen on the tree. The thing with avocados is you have to pick them, and they have to ripen off the tree. So you, so have you to just you would pick one every two or three days and take notes, take let it notes. ripen off, and then go. Yeah, ah, got it. Got yep. it. Yep. Or you wait for it to work, drop. Dude. Or wait for it to drop. I always tell people too, like they have this big thirty foot <laughs> avocado tree, and they're like, well, when the fuck. It, it has fruit, but they're never any good. And I'm like, well, when do they drop? And then they'll pay attention to when they start dropping. And then a, a month before they start dropping, I tell you, That's start you want. Them then, right? Uh, or a tip I tell people all the time, well, as soon as the rats start eating them and you start seeing rat damage on them, that's when they're, that's when the oil content's right because they know they can smell it better than we can. So you start seeing damage on the fruit. You know that they're getting close to being able to to that content, right? So then that's when we start picking them and things, and then so it just takes a little bit of, like it takes time, like a motherfucker, and then it takes like effort and like, you know, knowledge of what possibly it could have been, and then it just it just takes like you know sorting it out to to be so able. So the best like thing to do is have some good avocado trees in a grove, right? Already that you know are badass plant some seedlings of some really tasty fruit that you like, you know, don't count on for any time, but when the time comes, 
you'll be able to have, you know, you'll be able to make that decision. You know what I mean? But nine times out of 10, bro, that tree is, is going to reproduce just like a fucking bag seed. Right. And it's going to be carrying those fucking genetics of whatever pollinated it. Right. right. So if you've got good genetics in, in that, in that growth, you know, it's a roll of the genetic dice and, you know, I mean, they might not all be fucking winners, you know, but you're, you're not one in 10,000. You know what I mean? That's just fucking crazy talk. You know what I mean? That's just right. like, that's right. not taking the time, you know what I mean? In my opinion. Um, but I've seen lots of, but seeds I, what I just and learned is that like even, sort of and I've what seen I just learned is like, that like even like the, 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 the Haas avocado that I ordered and the bacon uh, that I ordered, it, it just being a Dumbo grower, if I don't know the cycles, yep. I'll, I'll pull them at the wrong time and they may not taste good. That's what I've right? heard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it happens to me all the time. I didn't time. know that. Yep. Yep. You got to know. And like in my, in my office, I got, you know, you know, right over there, there's a chart of like all my avocados, you know, all my citrus. And like, there's like all these varieties, like hell and hearts toss. And it tells me season, you know, shape of tree, uh, cold tar tolerance. And it gives me all these fucking stats. just like we have under certain seed packs, you know what I mean? From all the years and testing and all these things. And then when people ask me questions and shit, I've looked at those charts for fucking years. I can just fucking, I have them all memorized, you know what I mean? And I've seen all those trees in action. So once, you know, once you get all those things going, you're like, oh, this is a fuerte. And I can see, sure. I can see by looking at the leaf of an avocado tree kind of, you know, eight out of 10 times, you know, around here, the varieties that we cultivate in this area, like I can fucking call that variety out like nobody's business. They have certain unique features that really are, are subtle, but you can totally pick them out. You know what I mean? And you just kind of, it just like, just like sure. anything, man. Looking like a vegeta vegetative time to touch them. Yeah. yeah. It was cool. Like working at the nursery and shit, like when I was a kid fucking avocado truck would come in or a you know fruit tree truck would come in and back in be full of fucking all different types of fruit trees and i'd have this i'd have this chart and there'd be nobody around and i have all these tags and i was just a fucking kid and i'm like okay i'd pull off i'd pull off a row of these fucking plants and i'd be like okay these are zutanos and i would fucking look at all these zutanos and i would tag the zutanos and then i was like these ones are the fuertes and i would do that with every fucking fruit tree for years we did that for years pulling them off and you just see different, you know, those things. And you can see them in the truck. You're like, oh, okay. After you got good, you started pointing at those. You're like, oh, I want those reeds back there or those things. And, like, people are like, how the fuck? You know, it's just, it's just cool, man. Plants and avos are cool. But you always plant the seed, dude. Just don't hold your breath with trees. I mean, you plant them today and you just, you know, have some shit that works that you know about. And then you can go back to those ones that you make, you know what I mean, or fiddle with, you know. I'm making mangoes and shit right now. I pollinate mangoes, plant mango seeds. I got all kinds of fucking mango trees growing around that I don't know if they're going to be any good or not going to be any good. But the most, a lot of them are. And as soon as we start getting to points where, you know, six, seven years down the line, they'll be ready to go. But I already got other mango trees and other stuff. So I'm not sweating. You know what I mean? But so just quickly, Tyler, you're way <laughs> off topic from our dog semen conversation. <laughs> Thank but God. but Thank I <laughs> but I wouldn't mind if you if you riffed on mangoes the same way you just riffed on avocados. Yeah, okay. I, I uh, I'd like to learn about the mango breeding and cultivation world. Yeah, have you ever have you ever ran the Hayden Hayden mango? Yeah, 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 hell yeah, man. Hayden, Yo, that, I got one on the Big Island, and oh my god, yeah. unreal. That's it. Like I was like, what in the hell? What kind of mango have these people been feeding me on the mainland? There's a, uh, uh, what the fuck is this? Uh, a good place to, for people to look up mangoes and like learn a lot about mangoes with cool charts. If you go to a, a Pine Island Nursery, it's a, it's a, it's a nursery in Florida. Um, they do a lot of the mango breeding and a lot of the selections and a lot of the, like the preservation of the cool varieties and things like that. But you can go to that website and you click on the bottom. There'll be like lychee viewer, mango viewer, and like, you know, a bunch of other weird tropical fruit viewers. And you click on those and, um, sorry, hang on. It's not one to charge my phone. <laughs> and uh, it'll pull up like all those, you know, these little pictures with the different mangoes, Cotton Candy, Hayden, you know, Timoteos, uh, you know, the Zills. I mean, there's, there's thousands and thousands of different mangoes, but you can actually see them. They rate them like, you know, five mangoes out of five for flavor and growth habit and disease resistance and stuff like that. Um, I wish we, uh, 
thing in SoCal is we can grow mangoes like crazy, but you'd be hard pressed to find it any good varieties at any nurseries. Like people don't think that you can grow them. It's really weird. I'm always turning people on to, you know, growing Hayden's and coconut creams and Glens and fucking Alfonso's and all kinds of cool varieties that are just fucking delicacies, you know, just, just, just fucking ice cream mango candy in, in your hand you know what i mean like uh, delicious no, you gotta send me one you gotta send me one I, <laughs> well, I if you have a hot or hayden mango dude i'm telling you it's, it's, it's fucking uh, yeah hayden i have a, a commercial status man do, 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 do you do peaches too oh yeah 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 peaches so, so have you ever had, uh, we get some up here called i think it's called a red globe yeah, the globe. Yep, the globe. Red yeah, globe, globe that's my favorite one man they're just massive and like so delicious yep there's a there's a like uh, here, we don't do the we don't do the globes as much. Like we have like the Babcocks and the the Evil Prides and the Mid Prides. It kind of just depends on if you're if you're looking for like white flesh or the old fashioned yellow flesh on on peaches. You know what I mean? Like you got the old school like, um, you know the like the old Georgia peaches and all those classic things people think of as peaches. You know what I mean? Those yellow ones. And here they those are like August Pride and Mid Pride and and stuff like that. Peaches and nectarines are hella, hella fast producers, like over producers. When they set flowers and stuff, I'm always, we, we'll take off 75% of them in thinning and fill up trash cans with just quarter sized fruit like this before they're ripe, just so we can get some, some Mac daddies hanging on the tree. Cause they are just, they're, they're, they're branch breakers. You know what I mean? So peaches and nectarines, you got, they, they take a little bit more work pruning and, and making sure that they're ready to, to hold the load and and they get a little bit more disease and stuff from peach leaf curl and stuff around here and and other things but man if you want something to produce fast in your yard put a peach in there you know what i mean that second year from a bare root you know peach tree a 20 dollars peach tree you'll have some fruit dangling on there you know they're like straight to the punch you know what i mean a mango or an avocado you're gonna wait a couple of years before you're gonna be able to to pull anything of value out of that you know, but I started yeah, mango uh, time things. tipping, tipping's going on and mangoes, you know, right now when it's winter and all those old flower tassels and stuff, we just did a bunch of tipping before May and winter came like the fall. I do a lot of tipping on where you, you kind of cut the ends of the mango, the tips of the mango branches and it, like it makes the canopy more complex and more, more bushy, but it cleans it all up and gets it ready. And then when you do good tipping at the right time, depending on your climate and when you're at the end of your flower cycles are going, you actually can kind of trick your tree into doing better production uh, more consistently uh, and more evenly through the canopy. Cause mangoes are like notorious for just like setting a random flower and throwing a random, you know, set here and then not doing it on the rest of the branches and, you kind of you got to get all the branches and the whole tree on like the same page in order to put it into like real real production mode you know what i mean um funky little tricks with those things and terrapoyas and all kinds of fucking shit my favorite things lately are plueries man one of my favorite things in the world are the plueries dude they're the plum and cherry crosses and those things are Sent me those. That's you sent me it's those. like a horse and a donkey. Yeah, you sent me a box of those. Uh, yeah, I sent you a couple. I could, yeah, yeah, those, those are fucking delicious. Those, yeah, a couple of yeah. The early ones. Yeah, yeah. I took a took a bunch to the San Diego Zoo when we did the talk before COVID and stuff. Now people were like, all oh, the horse department down there. I did a did a talk down there and was teaching them about their fruit trees and stuff. And I brought a big box of blueberries and uh, like the whole the whole friggin' zoo like crew was there just like what the what the hell are these things it's amazing you know so they are they're really fucking good they hang on the tree a really long time which is what i like a peach or something as soon as they come right you got like you know two weeks you know maybe a month if you're lucky of pulling and eating some fruit off of that they go they go really quick they come ripe really quick and they go really quick and i think they'd be able to make it up here huh you think they'd hang up here uh some varieties would yeah there's a uh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a oh, that's what I was saying earlier, there. dude. I, I planted my bananas and and a lime, and I, I have all these potted, uh, you know, tr fruit trees, tropical fruit trees, and I fucking started planting them in my greenhouse last week. Yeah, I Got couldn't handle it. I was like, fuck it, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never seen um, 
I've never seen a fully functioning, like tropical greenhouse in your type of climate, like actually like kicking off and going, but that's the way to do it, dude. If I live where you live, you bet your ass I'd be having fucking mangoes and fucking avocados in there. Yeah. I mean, it'll cost some money and we're doing it anyway. You know what I mean? You're doing it anyway. It's so. a little, little portion. Yeah. I thought about it and I was just like, fuck it, you know, let's put them in there and. Now they got a big, they got yeah. a big greenhouse like that in Wrights Park in Tacoma that's got all kinds of crazy shit. It's like a conservatorium thing. It's yeah. the craziest fucking greenhouse you've ever seen. It that's looks like a big church church cathedral thing. Fucking yeah, yeah. In Minnesota, yeah, right. this is what a dork I am. In Minnesota, I would go to the conservatory in the middle of winter and walk around with my big puffy on and a pair of scissors in my pocket. Yep. <laughs> that's it right dude, into it and then i'd go home into my greenhouse like, oh, and plug it and i'd have all i have nutmeg and all this shit growing and grapefruits and fuck it a, dude. <laughs> fuck it a. that's how i make a lot of my trees dude like i just did i just did a bunch of figs like we did black missions and uh tiger panache and kadoda and fucking black fucking Madeira, a bunch of different fig varieties and all the fucking cuttings like at the nursery, we should just you know, old old man, just, just wheel in a fucking, just an old cart full of fucking these cuttings of fig branches and we used to just cut them up into these little, you know, six or eight inch long little fucking plugs and just plug them into the fucking, into the rooting fucking um, block and uh, man, a little, little like perlite, maybe a little seed starter mix and a big ass fucking like little raised bed thing. That's like a, you know, a foot deep, you know what I mean? With some heat mats under it, plug a bunch of fucking figs or cherimoys, just a bunch of cuttings through there. Uh, and then by the end of the summer, they'd all be like five, six foot tall. And we'd sell them all for, you know, 50, 60 bucks. And it was just all those branches. So this time of year, that's what I always pick up is all the cool figs and all the stuff that I don't have. I'll take all the cuttings of some of the stuff and I'll make new trees out of those and just, Boom, you got new trees all day long, you know. So by this summer, well, you know, a bunch of cool figs that are ready to roll that are already ready to produce and stuff for next year. So, you know, gotta gotta restart with figs and mulberries. I do a lot of that with those. And I took some mangoes of this unknown seed variety mango from uh, La Mesa that I've been caring for for the last few years. And it has this cool like Nam Doc Mai Nam Doc Mai mango. It's like this long, like it's this long like asian mango it's yellow golden canary yellow fucking beautiful uh it's a little crispy uh, it doesn't get super super soggy until you let it get really over over ripe but it's it's fucking delicious a little crunchy um it's something similar to that this weird mango tree and when i was doing you know working stuff i'm like we're gonna we're gonna propagate this motherfucker so i took a big old branch off of that sucker and i just put those in the <laughs> and the propagation too so we're going to try to make some of those and see if we can get those to root hopefully it don't get too cold out there and it doesn't new to yep. me because i don't have too many so, out for them. i have a question for you tyler i grew up in new england and it blows my mind in socal that like i mean i i just pulled cauliflower today yep do you do you yep. appreciate what you can do in socal I was just walking. Are you jaded and you're like, <laughs> like you're you're so used to it that yep. well, my wife you're unfazed. So she's from she's from Rochester, dude. She's from fucking negative eighteen degree snowy weather, and like all your fucking fruits and vegetables for the most part, unless you're an Italian family and you got it going on, like which a lot of them do. They got cool gardens going on, but they can't grow everything out there. But most everything's shipped in there. You know, all your, all your, all your produce is just shipped in from other places. Right. And it's not, it's not any good, you know, and her fan, her family, her parents, everybody, like they never eaten any type of fruit until they started hanging out with me. Like literally, like I, she had never like eaten mango. She never eaten all this weird shit, like lychees and Suriname cherries, all this weird shit. She, nobody's ever heard of. Um, she, it's, it's unbelievable. And her parents are like, where's all this stuff been, you know? And, I went back there and I was like looking around when I was back, you know, visiting her family and around. Wait, here, sorry. Where is she like Jersey Italian or like no, it's Rochester, New York? I right. Okay. Like Rochester. Yeah. Like <laughs> Buffalo, Rochester, that whole fucking yeah, cold zone. Um, 
But when I was driving around here, like here in SoCal, everybody has a fruit tree in their front yard. There's a fruit tree in everybody's fucking yard. There's, a, there's an orange tree. There's a fucking avocado tree. There's a guava. There's Simmons. There. You know, every fucking yard, there's something growing in there. Like, if, you'd be hard pressed to not find something, you know? And it, there, it's like, I couldn't find anything until the last day. And I, it was this little Italian family, and he had, he had a couple of seed grown nectarines, some fig tree that he protected the shit out of. And his garden, and he, he, it was his pride and joy. It was the only fucking real fruit trees that I saw, like, normal people growing, like, in that whole region there. And I know there's more, but, like, compared to here, it's like, like you're saying, it's like, that really made me realize, wow, we can, we can do it all. And, and me and my son were walking around today, pulling shit out of the ground and eating onions and fucking yeah, sugar snap on. peas and. You know all kinds of stuff that are that are popping off out there already. Radishes and you know it's everybody's got snow on the ground most places. So I'm thankful, but you know it's always greener on the other side. <laughs> That's today's cauliflower. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yum. That was I had my six year old chop that. That's great, dude. And yeah, we pulled some good carrots today and some good <clears> radishes <throat> and definitely uh. California stuff, you know. So, yeah, I wouldn't so Kyle's very satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Peter, I want to check out, man. Thank you for having me on. Mel, it was good to catch up with you. Tyler, dude, send us some fruit. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Hit, hit me up, man. I'll send you all kinds of stuff, man. So, I'm yeah. I'm Tyler, tour. fruit I'll baskets for I'll everybody get, watching I'll get, tonight. I'll get, I'll get some fruit baskets out. I swear <laughs> to God, I will. So we'll take a tour. We'll do every, we'll do a little tour one of these days on the channel, and everybody can see the garden and stuff. We'll do that. Yeah, mean so, right on, y'all. Bless. Thank hey, you. Much love, dude. <laughs> Good night, bro. Cheers. Tyler, you got more in you, or you you want to call it a night? Man, I got a I got half a joint left, so I mean, <laughs> got a couple more questions I can spit until this joint goes out. My well, so dies, so Mel, you you asked uh, <laughs> Kaya about kind of male selection. What's your male selection process? God, I love finding males, man. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Um, um I like. Um, no, I like, no. The, the, let, let's start with Mel. Oh, um. Well, I. <laughs> Well, uh, it depends. See, depends on what you're what you're looking for, what direction you want to go with your breeding. If you if you have a plan and you want, let, I'll explain to or talking to Kai about um, layering and, and and stuff and genetics. And instead of just creating a female, why not create a male? That's kind of why I went that way with the question. Is because I that's what I did in my early uh, breeding uh, projects was not. I wasn't really concentrating on uh, making uh, females. I was concentrating on making breeder males by testing the females, the the sisters of the males. Uh, that would give me a close uh, an idea of what the males were going to be like, and I would just breed for certain type of males because I wanted to use those males to cross into different lines, and I wanted those males to be stable. I wanted them to be dominant and and recessive, depending on what I was using them for. Um, so, like for for instance, if I wanted to cross into the blueberry, um, the line that I used was, and I tested different things that I cross into blueberry to see what was dominant against blueberry. Blueberry is pretty dominant. But what happens is a lot of times um, with the blueberry, you'll get a percentage that comes back blueberry. But usually the F ones, um, depending on who, who the male is, most likely you'll get a lot a lot of earthy uh, flavors that come back, and that's been the most uh, you know, everybody says that they get earthiness out of their blueberry. Well, that's true, but there's a lot of selection and that earthiness is just a, it's a recessive trait. So if you know how to breed around that and through that, you'll get the, the blueberry terpenes that come through it. So, you know, you don't give up on it because it's earthy earthiness. You just have to select and breed through it. And, and when I say select males, when you ask me, how do I select males? It's not it, the male. Okay. The female gives you traits that you can select for. So does the male. I mean, you can't select for uh, resin content. Well, I guess you can if now with some males, but you really can't. The female is the one that, that produces the flower structure, basically. The the uh, uh, well, you want to judge both uh, male and female on finish rates. Um, 
but the female gives you uh, the, the terpenes and the uh, potency because you can't really sm smoke the male for that unless you smoke his sisters, his sisters. But the male, what you can select the male for is um, what he shows you is his structure. And that's the that's probably the strongest trait that you can use uh, your male for um, because you can breed anything else into that line through the female, especially if you're if you're selecting the females for potency and terpenes. The male is for structure. That's kind of how I do my males is for structure. I don't I don't really do the stem rub because I don't see a correlation me personally between um, rubbing a stem and in the end product, I've never tagged with a, a, a piney smell or a skunky smell uh, for potency at the end product. What I do is um, I'll walk through the garden if I can smell a plant. I mean, there's certain terpenes that just stick out at you and just pop right out. Those deserve a little bit of uh, interest and attention. But I don't really do any, any artificial stem rubs or anything like that. I just really don't. I mean, I, I did, but I didn't see any any correlation with the end product with the stem ropes so it's just to me i mean what does it do it smells really cool when it's in veg but that's not what we're smoking right we're smoking the flower at the end that's what we want to test and see see if you know the correlation between the stem rub and the end product then yeah that makes sense but if you don't you're just doing a blind test on the stem rub what does that prove what are you what are you shooting for so that's that's the way I look at it. <laughs> Tyler, I was cracking up. You were like doink 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 with your screen, <laughs> and you're muted. You gotta unmute yourself. <laughs> See, my phone is like. There we don't go. push the button. It won't take my finger. I don't know what the deal is. It must be dirty. I don't know. I'm like pushing the button over and over again. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> over and over again. But so yeah, I like to test. I like to do lots of testing um, on my males as of late. I, you know, a lot of intuition goes into what males I like to use, you know, initially, unless I'm doing a specific project or I'm doing some sort of preservation and then you know, there's different rules, but if I'm just like looking through some, a line or something, and there's, there's a plant in there that looks, looks like a female, uh, acts like a female, um, catches my attention in any way and turns out to be a male. I'm always, always tag certain plants that kind of like, kind of just stand out among the group. <laughs> and once they kind of stand out among the group and kind of work their way up into, you know, more of my frontal vision then uh you know i watch them a little closer and if it really turns out to be something kind of interesting I, i'm looking to use then i would like I, I i take take some leaf samples um and i have it tested for for what what's in there because you can't like like you're saying you know uh you can't you know you, you don't know you don't know you don't know because so, so Lo lola's your kind of girl <laughs> huh i said lola is your kind of girl <laughs> lola is my type of girl <laughs> Yeah, that was the mat. The, the, yeah, for sure. Uh, hey Tyler, do you do you, uh -huh. do you let your males finish out, or do you flower yeah. them all the way out? I flower them all the way out. I take cuts of my males. I like to flower them yeah. all the way out. And actually, resin males are my thing. So, ninety percent of the time, you know, male ain't gonna make the cut. You know, it just it just isn't. It just, you know, I see a, a hundred thousand freaking males. You know, uh, and a lot of people will pick up this big, strong, buff rocking you know kick-ass looking male and that's great for certain things but i always like those dainty special ones you know and most people didn't even believe that their resin males existed you know but i've been i've been playing with those things for for as long as i can remember finding males that just had some had some trikes on them and early triking males are always ones that i can almost guarantee that i'm going to use uh when they're when they're throwing early and strong before they even get finished out, before they even make it to, you know, week four to six to 10 to 12, depending on what the strain is. Um, if they're already throwing trikes or their, or their leaves or their, or their stalks are really greasy and tacky. Um, I like that. I, I, I do. I like taking those grease and tacks and, and resin. And I like, 
I like to hope that those correlate. And those males in my testing experience have always tested high, highest in, you know, everything, obviously. Um, but I'm a resin male type of guy. So, and if I find okay. a resin male, I love letting them flower out. It's one of my favorite things. And I always have cool pictures of males that are always flowered out. I love taking like stalks of males, um, cutting off the flower, to, you know, stalks a week before they're like dropping the pollen and like collecting those and, you know, collecting pollen with those, you know, in a little vase. And I keep them hanging up in the house for a little while. I, I, I like, I like males, you know. Have you, have um, you seen any? Uh... He likes males. Uh, what's going, <laughs> what's going on with the, is that a headlamp beanie? Dude, it, it is. <laughs> that's this cool. Got, it is. <laughs> this got Bluetooth capabilities. I listen oh, to the cool. Bluetooth. I've been listening to you. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I just, I had to. Oh, that, no, that is cool. I that's like, cool. yeah. <laughs> and I can charge it like with a USB cable. You know, and we're good to go. No batteries or nothing. So that's, you know, as long as I'm true it, I got 100% dude, it, farmer. True farmer, bro. I'm out there, dude. I got shit to do. <laughs> You know? Hey Tyler, have you seen have you, have you ever seen any males reverse back to females? I'm wild, actually uh, doing that right uh, now, man. I'm doing that with some Florel right now. Uh, my oh, you're you're, for, reversing you're forcing it. Reversing one. Um, no, I've seen them done. I've seen them. I've seen them reversed. I've seen beautiful you, stuff. I've seen 707. Uh, you know, take back some some males and some beautiful stuff. Me and me and Mr. Toad have talked about it. Um, have, you ever, doing, have you ever? Have you ever? Well, have you ever seen it without any uh, uh, hormones added? I've seen um, hermaphrodite males, like where they're where they're male yeah. for for a while. And yeah. All of a sudden, they start throwing throwing uh, you know throwing hairs and trying to pollinate themselves and start. Getting I had a couple of those with, and shit like yeah. that, you know. Yeah, um, that was weird. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that a few times, uh, which is kind of. I cool. even collected some seeds from him just out of curiosity. <laughs> He's like, yeah, "Okay, I've always wanted to pop those. That's that's what I'm doing with this remer this reverse male finally, because you know, me and Mister Toe were talking about it, and I always have Florel, you know, with me. Like, I use it for olive trees and stuff anyway to suppress flowers and fruit drop and all kinds of stuff. So when I figured out I could use that to reverse males, I'm like, shit, dude, I probably got some of that in my truck right now. So um, I kind of figured out what, what I'm doing, and I'm playing around with that right now uh, with the pandemic male. So he's already a resin male uh, as it is. It's one of the ones that I kept, I made. You know, um, it's, a, it's a TK Chem 91 Pam, Pam Anderson, and, and uh, it was a, it's a resin male that I selected out of the group. And he's kind of tall and lanky, but he's greasy. He, he drops some actual friggin' you know, resin heads on him, and he doesn't, he doesn't throw... He doesn't throw any friggin' hairs or anything at any point, fully flowered out or not. Um, he re-vegged really nice. He's fucking tough. It's it's a good it's a good fucking male, dude. It's got mm -hmm. you know he's. Uh, that's important. Male. A male that re-vegs that's real important in my my yeah, garden. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah 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 big big thing. I I, I like yeah. looking at roots on there. The ones that have yeah. the biggest nastiest root system, regardless yeah. of what's up top, you know, uh, the ones that clone easy stuff like that. But uh, we're gonna we're reversing that. We just started that. We just started that process, man. So we're gonna see what that actually does, you know, to him. And uh, it should be really interesting. But I'm gonna let him pollinate himself too, because I've got you know I got cuts. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do a weird male project, and I'm gonna plant those fucking seeds, and we're gonna see what comes out of those, you know. So that's 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 up on deck right now. So that's one you know what would be weird. It's this of a breeder made a, a a goal out there to breed a hundred percent Hermes. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't that hard? <laughs> you know, wouldn't that be weird? Just like that would be weird. <laughs> but hey, man, you know, I mean, every yeah. seed's gonna be a Hermie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, who knows? I mean, it's weird. Like, uh, you know, a lot of people talk like the male carries more information on its on its on its chromosome. There's weird things well, that it could be holding or doing that's not, and you know, I mean, Tyler, out of all the crops that I've grown out of all my years, the most potent plants that I had to kill off were Hermes. Yep. I mean, they were the, I mean, it's like, oh my yep. fucking God, why yeah. did you have the hermaphrodite? Yep. They're just you know? blitzing early as fuck and just oh, beautiful. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. oh, oh. And the smell oh, is oh. just greasy, <laughs> just dripping. Yep. Oh my God. It just always happens that way. The best ones are always Hermes. It just yep. seems like it. 
And that's funny because, like, you know, all those crosses that come out from those hermit crosses, you know, all those accidental fucking pollinations, you know, they're always just fucking fire, dude. All the legends are Hermes. They weird, came from, you know? yeah, all the weird. legends came from you know, I'm not supporting the Hermes, but I, there's something. No, I know. Shit, there's something you know to it. I mean? There's got to be a correlation to it. Exactly. Yeah, there's something to it for sure. <laughs> you know, but yeah. It's the strength of the plant, right? It, on some level, it's the strength of the plant's will to survive. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Fuck yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for but, that, but the problem, it, it's it's all depending on like what the you know how you know the stress level. That's when where it becomes an issue, and for totally. for some of us, you know, totally. I'm pretty hard. I'm pretty hard on on selecting against Hermes. Yeah, yeah me too. I, well, I, everybody tries to, but what do you do when they come up in a project that you've been working on for five or six years? Fuck, I know. Right. I, I mean, I don't funny. know. I, it's well, happened. Everything we're everything we're built on is is Hermie. You know what I mean? If you're breeding with a cam yeah. or a sour or a fucking cookie, I mean, fuck. I mean, it's you know, it's in there anyway. You know, so it's like it's it's hard not to. I was look. That's why I looked into that that uh, that Khalid Taizain um, reunion island thing because it had documented like extreme low hermaphrodism, like you know, as this cultivated land race for generational time and it like never would express you know it's like if you started with something like that and like move forward you know what i mean that's that's where i was going but you know that that's a project that died out but it's funny it doesn't matter what you're really breeding with because in the end you just you got to do selection yeah it's all about it's all selection yeah all about selection and, and everybody you know what's cool is every breeder selects differently through their own eyes right so that's yeah, why we got yeah. the varieties that we have and and some some will be good selections some won't be so good yeah <laughs> but that's totally. that's totally. that's just the way it works <laughs> okay. so yeah, just true. quickly before i lose them there's a comment uh picking smaller males for breeding instead of big strong ones and then a question which is uh reversing a male to get actual resin production from flower I talked to some cool a little bit about um, uh, what he how he picked his males, but he didn't say anything about the smaller ones. He's he told me way back. He said that he didn't like the first ones that flower. It showed flower, and he didn't like the ones that that flowered the longest. He always went for the mid, uh, and that's kind of how I I select my males too. It's right in the mid middle middle of the flower range. But I don't know yeah, about this the size. I always pick those smaller Danny ones, you know. I don't know why, but yeah, no, yeah. I always like the the more feminine looking males. I like to match that up, you know. You know. I, I was blessed to, to be able to uh, when I before I even started breeding or dropping seeds uh, on the market and stuff. I was uh, test I was test growing for uh, subcool for about two and a half years. I I did the quirkle the. the uh, Cheese Quake, uh, God, what else? The, the, he had a purple one. I forget the, the purple one that we grew. Um, and I test grew for Motor Rebel. I test grew for Cali, was it, who else? Cali Connection, I think. Swerve, yeah, I test grew yeah, for yeah. him. Yeah, 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 Cali Connection, yeah. Yeah, there's, oh, a few, yeah. there's a few guys that, that I test grew for way back in the year, but you know, it was, it was kind of cool just to kind of see what the, you know, how, to you know, do the feedback. They they had a list of things that they're looking for, and kind of get you in the mind of the you know the breeder, so say see what they're looking for and and how they select. And that was years ago. I, mean, I remember when we did the test grows, we had a list. We, I mean, there, there's certain traits like um, how long was the veg, uh, uh, were they dominant in indica or sativa or hybrid? You know what I mean? There was like a checklist that we had to answer. Uh, these questionnaires that that that, that the uh, readers would want to know. Some cool wasn't like that, but the other guys were. Like Motor Rebel gave us a little thing, and <laughs> but those are guys. You know what? Those guys are still those. I still keep in contact with a lot of those guys. As a matter of fact, uh, I kept in contact with Subcool until about a year before he passed, and then um, uh, a Motor Rebel. I, I just talked. I just met. I kind of crossed paths with him a few years ago, about two years ago, and then. Uh, uh, swerve uh I, we bump each we bump into each other every now and then but um man i wish uh i could connect with them a lot more i don't everybody's so busy nowadays you know they're just everybody's doing their own thing and i i can i totally relate you know everybody's on their own little path 
but but it's kind of cool that's what the cups in seattle was really cool about because it, it was like where we could meet with everybody yeah, you know, man. and we don't have those things anymore because of uh the legalization when they made it legal in our state they they took away the the fun stuff like uh, the hemp fest and the cups and, and all that shit that we used to party at. We can't smoke in public anymore. I know this is about it, man. This is this is our uh, this is our cup, dude. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> you, you know what's crazy? They they were more relaxed when about us smoking in public when it was illegal than when it's legal. Now they don't want us to smoke in public. It's like what the fuck. <laughs> Wacky, I don't understand it. I feel like I'm in a bad movie every day. It should about seven years ago or about ten years ago at Hempfest, you could stand right next to a cop smoking a joint, right? <laughs> you yep. can't do that now. It's wacky. So that was that other question about the mail, the reverse. He wanted to he wanted to know if to harvest resin from it or to see the resin from it. You you think you gather from that 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 question it was I miss uh, we can ask we can ask for clarification that was uh have you yeah, done, I mean, done a male reversal mal no no i i did a little bit of female reversal but i never attempted a male reversal and not not on purpose i've had them reverse on me like outdoors where i was like oh fuck look at that that used to be male <laughs> yeah totally like, i will survive <laughs> <laughs> I think I, 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 have a, I, I selected a, a stack of males last year, revegged them. Some of them have gone to shit, to be honest. And I just kind of cleaned the whole situation up and trying to, you know, I think I got about knocked everything down to about 12, you know, uh, from a couple different lines. And I, th I think that probably that's honestly the best way for me to go forward with it is to maybe do reversals on them rather than. It's almost seems like it's a it's the short it's a shorter game to find out what they're gonna be like than than having to dump dump them and then test the progeny in some yeah, ways. Well, you know? But say that again. Uh, I say, I was saying it's like it seems like almost a faster route to find out what they what they're gonna put than than uh, putting them on something else and testing the progeny to just do a reversal, you know, with them. And with the males. With the males, yeah. Oh, okay. So it, well, get, I mean, it's it's an it's a look. I mean, I'm, 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 it's kind of a question statement, you know. I think I think you still like it doesn't really matter like what they can do because like they still might not pass any of that. You know what I mean? Like, well, not, is, like true. You know, no. you, you know, not only so. that, if you, if you think about it, you're making an S one basically, right? Right. Reversing it into an S one, so the progeny you expect to be like the parent, like the, but it's not going to be because when you make the S one, you're crossing the parents of that plant back into itself so it's, you're not crossing that plant back into itself you're crossing the parents back into itself and those parents have recessives that made that one so you those are going to start popping up so you're never going to have a homo, homozygous uh crop by doing this <laughs> it, it's obvious <coughs> and unless the parents were hom homozygous right i think no matter no matter what you're gonna have to still grow fucking you know, a bunch of the seeds to figure out what yeah. the hell they do. That's, like I like, yeah. like like I recently selected that my my Pam F three uh the, to make the F four Pam generation uh, last season, and everything in the F four generation had the turf profile that I fucking hate that I select against in Pam one. So um, somebody likes it, but I don't like that turf profile. It's not the one that I want, but it's it's that male carried that that thing and he didn't smell like that when i selected him and i had no idea that that's what he was going to really contribute but across the board even in other plants i i picked up that goddamn turf profile so um i scrapped that whole f4 because i don't want i don't want that in the thing so i gotta remake it so i got i gotta look back in the f3 and <laughs> pull out a new male and and go go and go back um but yeah, I didn't know that that he would he would do that, and he fucking did that shit. So what's your son going to grow it? You know, so that's why what's I say your I know, you never what's know, your, dude. It sucks. What's your seed company's name, bro? Uh, Family Tree Seeds. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I knew yeah, you were a cowboy hat man. You know. So okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. See, I never <laughs> talked to you or met you before, so it's like, okay. man, this dude talks like he's a breeder. You know? <laughs> yeah, he's a breeder. <laughs> I've done it a few times, man, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm a. I'm, I'm, he's I'm, not I'm just all to, about I'm dogs. I'm young to the world here, but I'm not young to the game. Right, right on, here. man. Right right hasn't contributed a damn thing about the dog <laughs> <laughs> Are you a dog? Tyler, breeder? you've let us down. Tyler, you breed dogs also? You know, <laughs> He's going to tell no. some story from high school where he chugged a bunch of beers. And... <laughs> One thing led to another. There was dog I semen I involved. Else, dog semen. <laughs> Tyler, do you, do you breed dogs? No, I, I do plants, man. I do trees. So I'm a I'm a I'm a fruit tree specialist. I'm an arborist. I built my life doing fruit trees and cannabis and yeah. You know. So we've done avocado and mango. Uh, I have a, I have some yuzu outside. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Are yeah. you? Uh, can you drop some knowledge on the lemon, <laughs> citrus, yuzu oh, family? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like uh, like those yuzus and uh, it's basically a sour orange. You know, um, you you can use it for all kinds of things. It's kind of I don't know. You you have you have you have an, an Asian wife, so you use a lot of Asian food, probably, right? I, right? We we do. And that's that's a staple thing. That we had kaffir. it tonight. Yeah, the the kaffir lime and the yuzu orange; those are staples for different types of, you know, Asian culinary dishes. Um, it's not something you pull off the tree and just like eat or you know. Enjoy but is it is way. yuzu finicky in the world of lemon and? No. It's not actually. Um, it's really kind of a nasty plant. It's really heavily thorned. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it is. My, but mine is. <laughs> my, mine is very finicky. It, it, it. It's well. It's finicky because of the care practices. And you have. I. I would be willing to bet my. You know. I'd be willing to bet parts of my body that the way that it's planted, or if it's not planted, or in any case, like you have. You know, different things going on and. It, it, like people read like citrus don't want water and that's all bullshit and then people don't water them enough people don't want to mulch them properly and then like there's all these other things but citrus in general uh at a young age will take a little while to get going you know what i mean like you can plant if you buy the smallest fucking citrus a little gallon citrus and you plant it in your yard and you're even in a place like la or san diego or you got good weather it still could take that thing, you know, three years, two to three years to really start doing something where you notice uh, to grow. Plus, we have the leaf miner here, which is yeah, my, in mine's in like year three right now. Yeah, so what you probably got like a five gallon. You got year three. You got some got some shoots going on it, and it gets its butt kicked in the summer, and all the leaves get really crinkled up and crappy looking because the leaf miner attacked the shit out of it, and it's looking all fucking beat up, and you know it the Soil temps might be fluctuating. You know, you know better than most about you know cover on the ground and soil temperatures. You've heard my rants and stuff about that. But in most times, that that soil's clean under there. You got rocks or decorative things going on. Those soil temperatures are jumping around, and as soon as it hits 11:30, that plant stops drinking water and it's not eating any food, and it gets yellow and it gets picked on. And if it is growing well, or slowly, because they do grow slowly at first until they can get up their, their feet under them, um, they'll get picked on by the leaf miner. So in, in June, like early, like late May, to, you know, I'll remind you probably, you know, or you remind me, but we'll talk about, we'll get you some leaf miner traps. And basically it's a little pheromone, little sticky box um, that will attract the 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 male leaf miner to go in the box instead of mate with the females and decimate your tree so all your tree just all your new growth just gets fucking decimated it looks like shit and then you or your gardener goes out there and cuts it off because it looks like shit and your tree never grows because every year your new growth gets beat up by the goddamn leaf miner and the other stuff because in san diego we don't have winter to kill a lot of stuff and all the other bugs pick on you when the leaf miner aren't here and in the peak of the summer the leaf miner are wreaking havoc in all your new growth so young trees feel it worse. Um, so yuzus, they're no more finicky than the other, but you just need to do a couple things when they're young, more foliar feeding, uh, some, you know, some, get some fish, get some, some fish hydrosylate or some fish emulsion, get some, 
humic acid or fulvic acid, push it in there with some fulvic acid. You know, that's that's a cool trick that that, that I use a lot. You know, throw some fish. I'm looking at you, acid, Pacific Grow. Uh, make sure the ground is mulched. Make sure you're doing that. You know, you're you're doing things like that. Um, but yuzus are cool. They're they're the best thing you can do for it is get the leaf miner traps in the summer. You put one out in June, and you put another one out in late August, and that'll knock down 50% of your damage and your problem. And then you can kind of work with that. And if you can get you know 50% pressure off of a young tree, then that thing will, that thing will grow quicker. You feed it good. You force feed it a little bit. And uh, with by year four, year five, you should be good to go. Um, but you don't want to prune it a lot if you want it to produce. So you want to just protect it and love it and get it nice and, and, you know, healthy before you start doing anything to her. Um, but yuzus are cool. I don't, I don't have a yuzu. I got a kaffir lime, which is, you know, you use the, the, the leaves and, you know, all kinds of different Thai cooking and stuff. But I, I used to bring the leaves and I used to just crinkle them up in my pocket at work when I used to work at the nursery or whatever. And we'd jam them in my shirt or rub them on my thing so I didn't smell like dank all the time. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. It would be my perfume. It was great. You could use it for everything. Yuzus do great too. Just rub those on your on your on your sleeve. Go talk to anybody, dude. Fresh and refreshed. You know. But, but. They got lots of seeds in there too. You getting any of them off of there? You tried them yet? On the seed front? No, the yuzu. Have you pulled any fruit off of that tree yet? Yeah, but well, that this this is why I'm drilling you with my questions because <laughs> <laughs> my fruit is not very satisfying yes. and yeah, it's underwhelming relative to what I know Yuzu's potential is. <laughs> gotcha. And well, so it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you send me some pictures. We'll look at it. I'll give you some. <laughs> but I, but I, also, I definitely you will. know, if it's a real youngster, you know, and I always tell people this, like fruit tastings and stuff, they do all these weird fruit tastings like they do with anything else. Like they taste the new apples and the blueberries and all the weird hot fruits that are all the geeks get together and, and rate fruit tastings and stuff, um, which is killer. Um, they, you always notice that the trees that they enter are always like the old fucking trees. They're always like the 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 year old fucking trees that are putting out the best quality best tasting fruit and those younger trees are just like young kids you know you can't expect them to be you know doing good work or putting in the time even though they're like you know doing it takes them a little while to build the relationships and to to get the practice and work out the kinks and really figure out how to craft this piece of fruit is fucking super tasty you know what i mean with all the elements around it you know what i mean it's got to build all those things so all those old you know, the older trees are always the ones that have the best fucking tasting fruit and the best thing because it's had the most practice, has the most relationships, it's been around the longest, it's it's really plugged in and and that's when the money starts happening. So I always say don't judge a tree by its fruit until after at least year six or seven, you can start really start thinking about, you know, hey, is this is this not what it's supposed to taste like? Because it will actually fucking change quite a bit. Um, you'd be surprised in certain types of, of plants like blueberries and, um, you know, things like that. So, a person so I, so I should not feel bad that in year three, my yuzu. No, <laughs> all <right>. no, no. <laughs> so that's all I really wanted yeah. to know. No. Um, but yeah, you got to do some stuff. I mean, it could be, it could be good, but you got, you know, it's, it's still, it's still a youngster and, uh, it lives in LA, so it needs, you know. <laughs> so it it doesn't have a lot to complain about. Yeah, yeah our water hey, is terrible, dude. Like, um, that's the one thing that, that sometimes plants and citrus and things around here have a hard time with is like, we're like, the last time I looked a few years ago, we were ninth on the, the worst water in the country, like rating, you know, like our chance, Southern California, we have like the ninth worst water in the country, like, you know, testing wise or something. Uh, I don't know how close or different it is now, but we're, we're, we can't be much better. Um, sometimes what's in that water will react negatively, you know, and there's all kinds of fucking big word fucking things, chloramines and fucking these other things that have ionic bonds that will block that fucking 
that exchange, that, that nutrient exchange that needs to happen, especially with young kids that are locked out in crappy soil and, and stuff like that. So having really poor water makes it harder for some trees that are having a shitty time to kind of pull out of out of fucking dodge. So if you got really bad water, your tree's not growing or it seems like it's yellow or just not putting picking up what it needs to do and you swear to God that you're doing everything that you can you know that that's right to do the thing and still not working then you got to look at your water uh and i always do uh i always start doing foliar feedings with like bottled water or filtered water or clean water good water that i know is good and not my water um mixed with the folic acid and like some fish or some kelp or some sort of you know fertilizer with minerals and, and nutrients in there that i can push into that into that you know four speed you know, that plan a little bit, you know, kind of like if you're dehydrated and you go to the hospital because, you know, you can't take in fluid fast enough. So they give you an IV straight to the straight to the vein, foliar feeding and stuff the right way. You can kind of do that same thing with a young tree or a sick tree or a tree that needs a little shot of something. And uh, sometimes doing that with clean water will fucking give that tree a fucking IV of that that main line of that good, good water that's not all blocked out. It's not dealing with that block out in the root system. And all of a sudden it gets a full belly and a fucking recharge. It's like, fuck this situation. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And all of a sudden that wakes the tree up and the thing just starts fucking taking her off and just dealing with it. It's, it's fucking crazy. Um, but I've seen that happen with some, with citrus, like a number of times. And it's like, wow, well, that's, I guess that's what we should have done. You know? Um, all right. So that, just in, in summary, you're a fan of IVs yourself. I like IVs and I like good water. If you can deal with it. <laughs> Buy a water do, do you, do you and the water. wife inject each other with just <laughs> nutrient like? <laughs> well, you know, it helps. It helps, it helps not to be honest. No wonder you have so much energy all the time. Well, you know, I, me, it's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> I need hey, to Peter, more. I can't keep it on. I got to tap out. Yeah, why, I was going to say, why, why don't we all tap out? Because it's uh, yeah. almost, I don't remember what <laughs> time we started, here. but I it was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I got shit to do in the morning. All right, shit. well, d does anybody disagree with the idea of ending? No, I but uh, <laughs> thanks for, thanks for uh, inviting me in. And uh, Yes, thank you. Here's uh, Le Lemon Hoko, like, uh, just to hear more about you, you know, and what's going on. And, you know, want to get to know you more, man, on a personal level, dude. Right on, man. We'll, we'll hook up. I'm, I'm, are you going to be by Kaya's tomorrow? No, I'm up in Bellingham, man. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, but where are you at? Are you down on that, down that, near there? Graham. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be down around sometime, but, you know, we'll, we'll look. I'd love to link up. Okay, cool. Bellingham, oh, man, that's like four hours awesome. away. <laughs> I know. Thank you, bro. All right, Tyler. It's good and to meet Tyler, you. Tyler, we'll talk SoCal stuff. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> we'll Thanks, we'll, we'll, we'll high, swap bro. stories of plants okay. that are looking exceptional in February. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Later. Much love.